That's what you got to do. You got to ugly face some shit like that. You know what else I ugly face for? You see how quick I got in the character? You know what else I ugly face for? <laughs> when disaster fucking battles. I can't lie. I do not make that many ugly faces in my life. Yeah, you be doing all but that. But when you battle, the shit that you... I, I, and I know that a lot of it, you could come off the top at the beginning of every verse. Yeah. Every Everybody already knows that he's going to freestyle some shit about he, what he just said immediately. I'll every, be doing that. Every, yeah, we always we always <laughs> wait on it as fans, right? But you 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 have a lot of moments, and you could get so you go so far into, <laughs> and it lasts it lasts for a minute, right? And you you could do nothing but make ugly faces to it. So, <laughs> so yo, hey, my guy, I appreciate you for sliding through the Dancer Project. So we got my guy Disaster in the building. What's yeah. been good with you? I know you had a battle this past week. It's been a busy week, man. I appreciate you for having me, man. Bringing me out here. It's uh, it's um, you know, um, it's been a long time coming. You know, doing this battleship, man. You know, I'm still in here just working right now at this point, and I'm still battling while I'm throwing on other events. So what we just had was like a event called the lot which it was under gtx my, my company that i started a battle rap company that's kind of a continuation of the grind time the old days you know what i mean we brought it back lush direct me and a lot of other people that were involved in this that were from the beginning building stages of the shit you know what i mean and um we took a little break off we put together two crazy events last year and we facil facilitated a lot of other events but Last week, or actually not even a week ago, it's been like three, four days. Like three, four days ago on Sunday, we had the lot, which was kind of a West Coast grassroots. We wanted to keep it like really thorough and just in a parking lot outside. Okay. Palm trees in the background behind a liquor store, just like. Typical California <laughs> shit. And that shit went off, bro. We had a crazy ass event. I battled a dude named Next. We had real name Brandon versus Active, Danny Myers versus Dev the Demon, who goes by Fouette Dev, Cali Smooth versus Saint. We had Kamikaze versus Clutch the Kid. And um and we had one more battle. I don't know why. I can't think right now. Fate versus Billy Moondocks. And they all were fire. So yeah, it was a crazy ass fucking weekend. I'm tired of shit. And I got sick last week too, so I had to get over that shit. Through it all. So so that's you behind the entire yeah. project. Yeah, right? yeah. Like I put together everything. In that event, like Usually, there's a lot of us working together, but in this in this scenario, I was doing everything. Like I'm talking about, like I got the porta potties met up with the motherfucker to be there to bring the shitters there because we had to put some shitters outside because there's no bathrooms. It's yeah, not in the club. I had it. to bring those there. <laughs> I had to get the locks for them, lock them myself, like take care of those. You know, it's it's all the little things like the deposits, the 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 security guard, the hotel, checking into the hotel, like driving from place to place and doing all that shit instead of having a whole entire like group of people doing it. You know what I mean? Kind of was to cut costs in the in this scenario because Smart. you just got to do it yourself. And I Smart. did a lot of deals with the people like with the lot, like the the liquor store that was there is called El Munchies, and I did like a deal with them. I told them like I, I'll promise you about like three thousand dollars worth of sales on a day like this. You know considering there's going to be 150 people in your fucking parking lot, we would just like to have the venue for free, you know? So I got that out of the situation. I had to, I cut the cost on that and then cutting the cost on like having to sell a bar and all these other things that come with the club and lights and fucking extra equipment and shit that you're going to have to pay motherfuckers to bring to you. And I imagine that as many people that came through that event and how popping it was as a business owner, that's still probably taking a loss. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, I, I battled for free. I didn't take a loss, but I battled for free. Like, if I was to get paid, I would have taken a loss. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I battled for free because, like, dog, like, these people all forgot why the shit, why we did this. And this is the second time I do this this year, and I've never, I haven't done it since I was young. You know what I mean? Since we used to fight for every fucking dollar. You know what I mean? Coming up doing this. And it gave me a different hunger, dog. It made me realize that if you battle for the bag, no matter what the fucking scenario is. You're never going to get that fucking feeling that you're looking for. That feeling that when we were kids and we had this crazy dream and this hunger. We're kind of all older and jaded, the veterans and the people who get get paid. You know what I mean? 
And it's like, if we don't see the check, we ain't even going to start writing, bro, until the deposit comes in. I'm not right. writing a bar until the deposit comes in. And I've been like that for a while now. You know what I mean? And I kind of got sucked into that. And this just made me realize, bro, there's nothing more important than the content and the art. And sure, you should be compensated for it. But sometimes you got to remind yourself why you do it. And I got to battle like most most likely that is, I'm going to get paid most likely six figures off of soon. You know what I mean? With Crooked Eye and like do I need to like fucking sit there and base every single move that I do on, Oh, if this is not the exact bag I want, I'm not doing it. And why the fuck should I throw an event? If I'm not going to make money and I'll be talking to sponsors and it's even how I'm choosing my sponsors these days, I'm trying to make sure they're people that care about the culture. Like if a motherfucker just starts saying like, Oh, well, how much money am I getting out of it? It's like, yeah. it's like, uh, you know, probably nothing dog. <laughs> like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, it comes with the love for the shit and putting in the work. We built the shit to where it's at right now. Like, all the leagues that you see, their formulas and what they're at, we've brought that to all of them. Like, coming up, like, when we were younger, like, that's what we did. And we brought it to the point that it that it's at from hard work and, like, extreme resilience through, like, not getting paid like that. Like, we had to push it up to, to get those checks. And I've seen some big-ass checks, you know what I mean? It's just, nice. yeah, that's where I'm at with that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just kind of... I love this shit. You know what I mean? I got to just fucking remember why I'm a battle rapper and why, I, you know what I mean, the rhyme, the word, and what, what it matters, and especially in a formulaic scene now, which is not original no more, and most people just rapping the same shit, and their fans are eating it up, and they dissing the real motherfuckers because they like this bullshit. You know what I mean? So it's tough to, like, preserve this shit, and, like, and I'm I'm doing it, man. I'm just, fuck it. You know what I mean? Like, I got to preserve this shit, like, this art that, you know, came from like this is the like continuation of scribble jam and because you got other forms of battle rapping but we're talking about from the supernatural and juice and the real the 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 battle rap like that existed to where there was tournaments and it was the official shit the side shit didn't matter and now the side shit is what matters because it's a participation trophy culture so like people don't need to have their battle judged and they don't need to freestyle Hell, some of them don't even need to write their own shit no more, dog. It's like a music yeah. industry. So, like, the music industry yeah. has affected battle rap, and battle rap has became mainstream. And a lot of people think it's about your chain and what you got, and you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the entire, and we were talking about this earlier. I think the entire world's going a little crazy. <laughs> you know, like it's it's not just inside of battle rap. I mean, everything's everywhere. been affected by. I mean, in in this sense, we we're talking. It's a it's a art art form and a business. It has a business attached to it and potential for it because wherever there's traffic, you're going to have people capitalizing. And, you know, it's unfortunate that in a lot of ways we weren't able to preserve the actual integrity of it over it becoming more politics and money. I'm really bothered by how light he put down that cup. He's <laughs> <laughs> respecting your table. Yeah, I know. He, ninja, the way you know? He hey, this table looked like it'll break anyway. No, man, hell no. Nah, that's a great glass. table, by the way. This table is a very, very heavy table. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to break about this a, shit. about a good, a good 400 pound table. Yeah. But, um, yeah. In, in, in any industry, I feel like it's almost like it's been, uh, they've all been infiltrated by the editors. <sighs> Right. Dog. In everything that we do. And there's in, it's being infiltrated by the people who solely, and that, this is the problem with the world, is they solely see the dollar bill. Correct. But, like, yeah, I mean, it's just, the, the main thing is it's became a cookie cutter thing so everyone could participate in it. So they made it more digestible for the masses. That's what the fucking problem is, is that battle rap itself was a, was a niche and it was an art form. Mm -hmm. That was completely subjective to like people that are extremely intelligent and are paying attention to it. And it was a very few people that were able to understand it and do it. To be a battle rapper back when we were coming up was a serious fucking thing. When somebody asked you and they were like, holy shit, you're a battle rapper? It was like, how the fuck do you do that? The most common question we would get is, how do you go up there and you fucking come up with that like that, bro? I can't do that in a million years. Now it's like, yo, like you meet somebody and they'll be like, I'm doing a battle soon. Yeah. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you'll talk to the kid next door and he's like, Hey man, just wanted to let you know I'm doing my first battle in like a week. And it's like, dog, it's like, it's became it's a thing that everybody can do it. Yeah. Like, but as a fan of the culture, I think we see pretty easily why 
those statements were being made. Like I can never fathom in a million years doing something like that. Because it because was, when we hear them go, like I I can't believe he went into the ring and did that. You know what I mean? Like I, in a bad way. Like why the fuck did you just do that to yourself? Well, the thing is, there was so much shit that came with it. Like to get on stage back in the day, bro. You used to show up to an event, a real hip hop underground event where it's just networking and it's people from the city and you see some faces that are probably somebody and you have to go in there and you you see in people that are from the culture around they don't even really know who you are you still haven't even made a name like that like imagine like me in a period where disaster is not really a name like that which is hard to imagine but like uh, <laughs> imagine a period of time where i still didn't make my name it's just like any other name coming up there in front of those people that are just standing there like talking and then you're just starting to rap and they go, all right. And they're looking at you like, all right, impress me, loser. Like, who are you? That shit different. back in the day hit different because it was 30 seconds of it. You had 30 seconds to do it on the spot. And if they could tell that you wrote it, you're getting booed and you're never coming back there again. <laughs> so you have to impress the dog shit out of these complete strangers. On the spot versus someone you didn't know you were going to run into and it's judged. You don't get to be like, all right, I'm going to go home and you know what I mean? We good, bro. Hey, you know, good battle. <laughs> you know how battle rap yeah, is now. Yeah. Nah, you have to stand up there with the dude while they while they announced it. Like, and you have to stand up there and be like, yeah. take it. You lost. <laughs> you have to go home and like look at the whole crowd. You know what I mean? While the crowd is also telling you that you lost. You, it you know it, it could be hostile. It used to be crazy. Like we used to watch people get the shit shredded out of them. You know, like just comes to mind was Little Fizz from um from uh um, B2K guy? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he came to the pit. Like so what we used to have was called the pit in, in, in LA and it was like a conglomerate of all the most banged out, most thugged out and most hip hop heads in the city. And they, they all came together. And like Tyrese used to be hosting the shit sometimes because Tyrese from Watts. People don't, a lot uh -huh. of people might not know that. And like Red Man would come through there. You know what I'm saying? They, it, Kendrick Lamar would be over there. He used to go by K-Dot and he didn't used to say a word. He used to just be sitting in the so back and listening. It, yep. He didn't. And I'm pretty sure don't, you know, don't hold me to it, but I'm pretty damn sure. He went up there and tried to battle once, and he got booed. Damn. You know what I mean? I'm I, like, <laughs> I'm not pretty damn sure. I'm like seventy five percent okay, sure okay, okay. that that happened. But I know he was there, and he used to be listening and watching battles. So little Fizz was there once too. Somebody talked his ass into getting on stage. <laughs> I don't know who the <laughs> fuck did it. Yeah, but they shouldn't have. He, he got the shit folded out of him by a little kid from like Grape Street. Like some kid came up there, some little gangbanger, like fucking marked him out into an it's oblivion. It's wild, the people that like, think they can show up on that <laughs> like, and, and, and he got, like... But then, like, the homegirl stepped in, who who is the only girl at the pit, shouts out to Lady G, who was a battle rapper. And, um, you know, she goes by Jizzle now. You know, she's an artist. She's dope as fuck, too. And um, she jumped in and just had Little Fizz's back, and he was able to kind of walk off limping from the <laughs> stage and be like, oh, we kind of, you know, thanks. Like, you know what I mean? Squad. I didn't die out here, you know what I mean? But, like, he got his his wig peeled back up there trying to fucking battle, you know what I mean? It was just, yeah, it was cutthroat. You couldn't do it. Like, people that tried to do it like they do today, like, you see Mook battled Adrian Broner. <laughs> Adrian Broner did a battle like that's my point like it's because now how does that make you feel I mean it, it's it's just gimmicky shit because now like yeah obviously Adrian Broner could pull it off but come come down to how it was when it was like real like dog like the motherfuckers are threatening you in the crowd bro like you're walking up to the crowd and people are throwing up gang signs on you it's like how like the shut the eight mile was like how Eminem was painting it but like gangbangers not thugs like yeah. actual people throwing up sets where are you from and shit like that bro yeah. they're all sectioned out inside the place you bump into the wrong group like is you know that's the type of shit we it was like you come in there and do that because if you could come in there and do it then okay you know that's why a lot of people like in the city where i'm from you can't take away what i've done because i'm I might not be from the hood, but I've already been there and battled and I put in my work wherever it, before it's we go, fucking popping. Before we go too far past that, 
tell me about your upbringing. A lot, the thing that we like to discuss here is how it yeah. all began, right? Like, what made disaster? And I'm, mm. I'm talking about from yeah, early on. I can was tell it your you. Parents like music. You know what I mean? Did they fuck with music, or was nah. it was it a specific person that you came across? How'd nah, that, it's that go? it. So me discovering hip hop and battle rap were kind of close to each other. I probably like listened to hip hop for like two years before I became a battle rapper. Two or three years, I found hip hop. I grew up in Lebanon. You know, what I mean, I it was half half because I grew up in America too. But when I was like eight years old, I left here, and then I stayed there till I was like fifteen or sixteen. So I didn't come back till I was like fifteen. You know, what I mean. And those were like the important ages of my life of growing because I don't remember nothing past fucking eight. You know what I mean? Yeah. I remember. Yeah. yeah. I I remember like me turning into a teenager. Those are like the most important years. And that's kind of how. And again, you were born where? I was born in Los Angeles. Okay. But then I ended up in Beirut, in Lebanon, in Shwefat, which is like a city in the outskirts of Beirut. It's still part of Beirut. Um, so I grew up there near the airport, and it was under, like, a very shaky period of time. Israel was bombing the shit out of us. There was a lot of crazy wars happening. I lived on, like, the fucking, on, like, a buffer zone type of shit where it's going to be hard for you to understand, but, but I lived on this this area called Mafra Hayasillam. Hayasillam goes into Dahi and there's Shwefit. So I lived, like, pretty much on the line where... Israel used to come down with like crazy helicopters and bomb the fuck out of shit. And as a kid, I would see all that shit and it fucked me up. So when I first started writing, I started writing raps about like fucking like freedom fighter shit. My first couple of raps that I ever wrote in my life, which I don't remember exactly how they went. But they were all crazy shit like that. Like talking about F-16s. Like I remember just rhyming the word F-16s, shattering my dreams and like shit like that. I'm a kid. Uh, It's not like crazy complex shit. But it's like, you know what I mean? Poetry. Yeah. Like, and it was like my way of, and then it really was like my boy who was from Sudan, but also was a New Yorker and he spoke Arabic and lived in my building. was like a big homie to me in like, I was friends with his little brother, so he I would come over there to hang out with his little little brother, but he would be like, come in my room, chill with me, man. Like, my, my little brother's too young for you because he was, like, two years younger than me. So when I was, like, 12, I would be chilling with this 10-year-old. His, his, his brother was, like, 18, 19 already, so he's like, come chill with me. Like, you're, you're already 12. Like, here, listen to hip-hop. And he started just – so it was – Onyx and DMX were like the first things that I gravitated towards. And I think it explains why I yell so much and I'm so angry. (laughs) But like, so all that goes into like me at that period of time being a really fucked up kid. Like, so I was supposed to be like one of the craziest soccer players ever. And I I was, I got drafted to the national team when I was like 14 years old. I played for the biggest club in the fucking country. It's called Suffa in Lebanon. I played for the biggest club, like second biggest club, biggest club, whatever. You know what I mean? And uh, I started getting in so much trouble that, like, that shit, I couldn't play anymore because the shit would, the school would call up my club. And, like, I used to get, like, get in fights, too. I fucked up, like, a lot of my, like, tournaments and, like, years where I'd get benched and I'd get red cards. And I I had, like, a bad attitude. (laughs) So hip-hop became, like, my way of, like, venting. I immediately started writing angry-ass shit. and, And then I caught on to... To Busy B and Cool Mo D and KRS One, the MC Shem, those 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 wars that were happening, and I immediately was like, I'm doing this. What is this? This is what what I am. Yeah. And this is what I need to do. Here's the fucking craziest part. Both sides of my family come from a background of rhymers in Arabic. And they used to compete with each other. And this goes all the way back to, like, the 1700s. That's, that's fine. This, this is the juice, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, both sides of my family. Both of them. There are people on both sides of my family in Arabic. Because I rhyme now in Arabic, too. I adopted that ability out of nowhere. I oh, just wow. had it in my genes. I started battle rap in Arabic. I went out there and I created a whole new genre of battle rap, but in Arabic. So, I just translated it over and now it's a huge thing people do it in egypt they do it everywhere i'm about to go back and do it again you know what i mean so it was in my blood to be able to rhyme arabic words but the weird part was that everybody in my family can't rhyme in english for shit they're all arabic rhymers right i'm the first one to be born in america right so they all were born in lebanon then in the 80s i'm born in america 
six years maybe after hip hop. You know what I mean? So like I'm born <laughs> in a period of time. It's just so strange that like I'm yeah. speaking English, right? Because now I, I'm 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 Americanized, so I know English. I'm the first one out of the family and I turn into a rapper. Like that's yeah. what fucked my head up. And I felt like it might have been my calling more than playing soccer, even though I'm so incredible at it. Absolutely, you know what I mean? Bro. Like even till today, and I have a torn ACL, I could do some crazy shit with a ball. Like you won't even be able to tell. Like it's just so crazy that that comes to me natural. And dog, there's people in my family till today, they're in their eighties. They pull me to the side whenever I come out there and they start barring me out in the middle of like family <laughs> meetings. Wild. It's the fucking most insane <laughs> shit in ever. In the middle of family like, meetings. Yeah, like pull me to the side, like, dum, 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 and like just hitting me with the shit. And I'm sitting there like, Jesus Christ. Fuck, where's the food? And like the <laughs> shit in Arabic that they do, I they would body me, everybody in my family, even though I created a new thing and they wouldn't be able to do what I do. That's crazy. So you're, you're getting pulled aside from your grandmother and she's happening. This happened. Out, you. And this happened you know what I mean? She's like, it's time to battle. Ironically enough, the first time I realized this was at my grandmother's funeral, even though I kind of knew all this. Yeah. But I just ran into so many new like people and people I haven't seen from my family. And do dog, they, they all they, rhyme. Are they aware it was like of the what you do? fucking weirdest shit. Trippy. Yeah. Would have been so it was the weirdest shit ever, bro. I'm meeting all these random like different ages, 50s, 40s, 60s, 70s, 80s. Bro, there was a kid. Like it was just it got to the point where I was like, what the fuck? What like kind of, I, what kind I belong of to a rhyming family. Well, what like, do you mean rhyming? Like, is it poetry? Is it it's, hymns? It's, is it like it's not? It, it is kind of poetry, but it's competitive poetry, bro. This is the fucking like, weird shit. You freestyle against people with it, uh -huh. and you diss people. It's called zajal, right? It's called zajal for anybody that's watching this that's that knows dope. Arabic knows. And then irtijeli means improvising so they have this whole thing of improvising uh, and it's competitive poetry and you're dissing your opponent how do you count bars though because it's got to be my turn ends your turn goes you know what how, how do you count bars it's weird because right? usually they use a beat that's a good question it's usually a they use a beat but you could do it without it like they don't care they'll just that's fly like spit the <laughs> shit and it's almost like it's a little bit more like spoken poetry they have less of a crazy tempo and a flow, but it's okay. still bars and they're barring you out and it's metaphors <laughs> and it's like crazy. Yeah. And, and hold on, bro. On my mom's side of the family, the motherfuckers used to go to war and do it. So they were warriors and they used to like slaughter people and then write fucking battle raps about their fucking <laughs> dog and spit it at their cousins and shit like that. Like we killed your family and we did this. We're talking about like in the 17, 1800 <laughs> Whoa, dog, <laughs> dog, like my mom's side of the family, they're vicious as fuck. My dad, that, they're, that's they're more, the they're world. more education. I, I wish I could have been not, not for those reasons, but I wish I could have been a part of the authenticity of that world. It's of that crazy. Time period. It, it, no, it's just nuts to me that I rap <laughs> like in that. I like do Dude. this. It, it's just, I feel like that's why I never strayed away from it. If, 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 and once I became conscious of it, there's no way it's going to ever happen. I know now that for the rest of my life that I'm going to keep coming up with new ways to rhyme yeah. things because it's in my DNA to do it. We've been yeah. doing this for hundreds of years Bars. in my family. It's in hundreds, his DNA. Hundreds of He's years. inherited it. Yeah, bro, I've been battle rapping for hundreds of years. <laughs> fucking that's reincarnated. Fucking, that's some fly ass <laughs> shit. It is pretty fly. That's a now, fly claim. I, th I think it's just... It's wild because we know nothing of it yet that it's it's just embedded in us. It might be from from the way yeah. that people talk around you and your family. Are you are you the celebrity though of the family? Yeah. Or do they so they so they are completely aware. This is yes. this is our because it's, he's it's, our super rhymer. Yeah, because like at this point you can't really uh, bro people from where I'm from my village don't make it this far, bro. Mm. There's nobody. We don't we don't make it that far in life. I'm already successful. Like to be in America and be recognized and all that, bro. They don't make it out of the mountains, bro. We're humble sure. people, bro. We're peasants. So I'm how does go it go though? You like so, like so now you're you got this rhyming ability. You got hip hop inside of you. It's it's or you got rhyming inside of you. You got hip hop the influence now. What was it like the first time you stepped in into battle? And what what like what was the decision? What made you say I'm gonna go battle somebody? Yo. It's so weird. It's almost like a fucking movie. Like, and it's, it has a little corniness to it, but it's still like kind of a beautiful story. I mean, I just, dog, I was in Lebanon. I was supposed to be playing soccer. I was fucking everything up. I start convincing my parents. Like, I created this whole entire fake shit around me going to LA Galaxy. 
and I fucking forced my parents to move out of Lebanon forever. No. When I was 15 and take me back to LA. I wanted to just escape. So like as when I was 14 years old, I started creating a whirlwind of these issues to come to America <laughs> because I wanted to battle. Right. I wanted to battle rap, bro. Crazy. And I because I I felt like where am I going to find? I just didn't feel like when I was younger, I didn't feel like there was an international thing. Like all the people around me were fake. I was like, where are the African Americans and the, the, pe the people that rap? The, this is the, the, where's the shit? The, you guys are not shit. rappers here. Yeah. Like I didn't feel like I was going to be able to prove my point to the world being around all my local people that, and a lot of them were discouraging me, telling me shit like, bro, you're not a rapper. Like you're from here, you're from the dirt. Like you know what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. like go to school and get educated and do some other shit. Like you know what I mean. And make, like and make nine twenty five an hour. You know, like it's that. The, and it's sad. Lebanon is you know it now more than newer generation is. There, there's a lot of entrepreneurs, but the older tradition they were just f forced to just go to school and. You know what I mean? Like, just right. take jobs they didn't want to take for the rest of their I, life. I a lot of them didn't fucking follow their dreams. I, I love the Lebanese people. Oh, bro, the we're, Lebanese we're awesome. culture. I, I we're absolutely awesome. love it. Such, like, and we win such wherever you put us on earth. We, we, that's one thing about Lebanese people, bro. You put them anywhere on earth, they just become extremely fucking successful because we come from, like, really a different world, bro. Like, we don't really have shit. We don't have electricity, bro. Like, what, am, what are we fucking talking about here, bro? We're talking about a couple of hours of electricity a day. We run generators. The shit that we do out there, people don't experience that shit. Like, it's it's yeah. literally the worst countries in the world don't experience the shit that we experience in Lebanon. The inflation that we have is worse than Venezuela. It's worse than anything you've seen. There's nothing as bad as our economy, our way of life. There's no medicine. There's nothing, bro. If a fire happens, nobody will come put it out. Imagine that. There's no services. There's no fire department. Yeah, yeah. The whole country burned to the ground like a couple of years ago. And nobody did anything about it. So that, that has to be part of what's behind you with that passion. Of course. It has to be. Bro, I always think about one day they're going to erase Lebanon, bro. I'll probably fucking blow my brain out. Like, it's like my, it's like a bro. part of me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I just, as American as I am, that's always going to be what I'm rooted to because I learned everything from there. And I just, bro, it, it was just, I had a childhood. I had a real childhood. And that's what I feel bad for these kids today. They're just on their iPhones and they're just, mm. dog, I was out in the city, bro, taking like tra public transportation when I was 10, going to play soccer and like the slums, like walking fucking barefoot in the street on dirt roads. Like you think of it, it sounds like some crazy shit. Like it's so bad, but that shit gave me like the craziest experience ever. I used to be out in the dirt building tree houses and you know, I had a childhood, like, playing soccer in the street all day with thousands of kids, like, shooting the ball, two rocks as the goal, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. the shit that you see, like, in third world countries. Like, I, and that wow. experience is the realest experience, that networking and that childhood and having friends and in, in the neighborhood and everyone knows each other. And it's just different. Like, there was no crime rate. There was no crazy shit. There was no, nobody got kidnapped or any weird shit happened. Kids just did their thing. We had a crazy childhood. Last of a dying breed. Yeah, that childhood thing is gonna be a thing of the past moving forward. I yeah, mean, you they're on their Shut they're up. on their iPhones now, man. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, I, relentlessly. There is no childhood. You know, as now, I'm a dad now, and I work on my phone, right? And and I always I always think like, damn, I shouldn't shouldn't do this or I shouldn't do that because because they observe everything. Yeah. And so what I'm doing with them is I make sure to try to keep him away from that. Everything I'm, I'm, I'm having him do is just interactive and playing with stuff mm. or me and him having conversations, right? Most parents are like, here, here, yeah. TV's on and walks away. I don't like being away for a second, like a second. Yeah, that's because good. I feel like I feel like it's so important to be there, and a lot of it is based off my fears of what I'm seeing and what I've seen go on in the real world. Because these children nowadays are just misguided, and and like well, somebody else is guiding them. We, for you. Yeah, we blame the generation, the but we should blame them. the generation of parents because yeah. the parents allowed for that. Well, in, in order for them yeah. to be have been uh, uh, governed by the government is yeah. is because. The parents were like, hey, yeah. just watch TV. So they're programmed by the time that, like, everything they want to watch is TV or what's on, uh, what's on TikTok or what's on Instagram or what's on, you know, whatever the hell they get their news source from. It, it is a wild world out there. 
It, definitely more than ever, like, the influence is there. And yeah. there's an outside influence attempting to shape the kids. And it's more than ever. Scary. It's ever been. It used to just be school. And I told it you, used I'm to a, be just indoctrination. I, I told you I'm school. a blunt motherfucker, and this is something that's just through and through <laughs> about me. I feel like being a man is something that is... <laughs> Not, yeah. not in not, America. Not, yeah, it's not. You know it's not I mean? a popular. Yeah, anymore. be a man. <laughs> you know you what I mean? You do see. That, I mean, and I don't give a fuck how anybody feels about this. There's definitely an attack on the the, the, the male figure in the world right now. Like masculinity. masculinity. Period. It's under fucking huge attack. Like you see, like people justifying like, dog, ain't shit can run without masculinity. Ain't shit would have been built. Ain't shit would have ever happened. There would have never been fucking roads. There would have never been freeways. There would have never been fucking buildings. They would have never been shit. No, You'd just be on horses picking fucking berries. Yeah, and then, you know, the you got truth. that. You got that clip of That's when when Tate truth. was talking about when, uh, you know, you even think about that toxic masculinity and and shit like that. There's but no like, such thing. Yeah, like there's who, no such who, thing. Who do you? That's who, a fake word. When when you when you're in Made trouble by losers, like if the people could hate on men all they <laughs> want, right? But when you want to be protected. Yeah, yeah, oh, no. You're calling a man. Oh, bro, like, it's the funniest shit ever watching, like, like, noodle neck fucking dudes be like, I don't know, I don't know, like, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Then some shit happens and it's like, oh, babe. Yeah, yeah. We're both hugging each other, babe. Yeah. You know, like, the fuck wants that guy giving advice, you know what I mean? Literally. (laughs) It's it's just the way the world is. Now, now getting back get, getting back to battle real quick because we got to get on this this before, battle before shit before we kill because, off the whole planet. Oh yeah, but we're <laughs> but we're still gonna dive into that. All right. But what cool. I'm I'm still intrigued about is how did this first battle come about? My first battle was me. Um, I don't really know exactly what my first battle was, but I know around the time it happened and how it happened. I was just going uh, around looking for ciphers. Everywhere. Where is this? In in LA. Okay. West San Fernando Coast. Valley. Okay. Eight one eight. For sure. You hear me? Everywhere. I'm talking about anywhere remotely would hear somebody freestyling or attempt to freestyle. I would roll up on them and be like, "Rap, yeah. let's go, rap now!" <laughs> like, dog. I was so combative. <laughs> My first year in America. It's like, I was like, I'm here. Right. Do you know where I just came from? <laughs> Time to test out the two years of practice that I've had. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? For like, the LA Galaxy. Oh, my God. Like, I was, <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, dog. I knew that. I mean, you got it. You made I had firepower in my, my, I was mad about everything. I was kicked out of every school. I was removed from every school you could think of at that point. Nobody accepted me. I failed at everything. I was the worst fucking kid ever. When I come out here, the LA Unis- Unified School District doesn't accept me. So I sit out for the whole, because I came here like in the middle of the year, sat out the whole fucking year. And was just walking around to parks and looking for people to battle. <laughs> like I was out here, a 15 year old that's not in school. <laughs> right. and I was, and then I got back into school the following semester and shit didn't work out for me. And I kept on just rapping. And just cafeteria battles and ciphers and then house parties. Ooh. And then that's how I got my name. Nice Killing p- people at house parties. It's a nice they, party trick for show. For yeah. Show. It's a yeah. very fitting name. Well, let you me know, tell you how like, I got it. it. It's, yeah, go um, that's, that's so like there's a hear. thing called Santa Barbara. Okay. There's a place called Santa Barbara in California. <laughs> Where? This place which some refer to as home of AIDS, <laughs> is literally the biggest fuck, face, fuck fest you've ever seen in your life. It's a college. We got to get you away from these Sour Patch kids. They're fucking so good. He's loving them. <laughs> it's, a college, it's a college that pretty much, it's an area called Aya Vista, where it's like thousands of houses of college kids, Right? that all live in these houses that are near the campus <laughs> that open up their doors and put a keg in each one of them. And they open it up to the whole public and everybody just goes in and out of the houses. What's and we're talking about hundreds of blocks of this. Block party. Dog. <laughs> it was the most 
fucking insane shit like Project X shit, people falling off roofs, people setting themselves on fire, jumping into like just insane shit, right? Just the uh, most so craziest mad. I never party. Got to do shit like that. I, I did, and that's why I don't party anymore. I'm yeah. I, I, I definitely I'm, party I'm tired. Now, but I didn't do that. I'm old. I already did crazy shit. Yeah, I had yeah, the, yeah, those yeah. types. Santa Barbara was just insane. I'm, I'm talking about waking up like with a bitch you don't know. Like, you don't know who's next to you. You wake up, oh, shit, bitch in bed with me. Like, in a house you don't know, and a person walking by you opening up a fridge you don't know and don't know the person either. I've definitely done that. I've, I've definitely done <laughs> Yo, the don't Santa know. That's Santa Barbara this. for you. Yeah. Like, getting woken up in the morning like, hey, um, we're kind of got to... Um, we got to go. Yeah, like, <laughs> hey, you guys got to go. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know who you guys are, but you got to leave our house. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. So there... I would destroy people because what happened was Eminem's ass put out the fucking eight mile shit. Yeah. And when that happened, every white motherfucker on earth thought they were a battle rapper. Absolutely. So what happened at Santa Barbara was there was a spawning of like a thousand new fucking marshals that yeah. are trying to rap. But they were really Bob Saget. And they all looked like that motherfucker too. <laughs> so... <laughs> it's I would so go into true. these fucking parties, wreck these guys, take their bitches. Like it was crazy because we would be like, like me and my boy would come up there, and I'd have other people with me that were battlers occasionally. We'd be like, "Yeah, we're we're actually battle rappers. What's up? <laughs> we're here to battle." And, and 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 it would always be like, "Oh shit, you guys actually battle? Like, you know, like because people used to battle on the side with their <laughs> friends, tap their friend. and dude, then like some real dude, motherfuckers would show dude, up. There's you a know? battle rapper here. Yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah, I see. So it. that would yeah. happen, or." Or I would walk in and somebody would recognize me and be like, oh, dude, there's a guy here who thinks yeah. he's the shit. Like, circle. And like, and that's when you used to serve people on the spot. Nobody would know what's going to happen. I'm watching an unsuspecting moron who thinks he's the shit. <laughs> so you at that mean? point, it's uh, that that's where the freestyle's talent Grab the taken. mic and just, you're about to meet somebody and introduce them to you. Like, what's up, pussy? Like, and you, you kill him. And yeah, back in the day, it was all mics. And then you kill the guy. You know, Even at these parties? Yeah, because these parties would be like DJ parties. And oh, they, like, there's okay, beats. okay, they, okay. Yeah, this is dope. This is when yeah. this is we dope. Were, we got to get a cartoon thing the, printed. The Santa right, Barbara that comes shit. up with this this part of this. Yeah, skit. the Santa Barbara shit. There was no acapella yet. This was like two thousand and one, two thousand and two. You know what I mean? Two thousand and two or some shit. So the acapella was still like we started doing acapella in like oh three oh four, like end of oh three. Like it started becoming. When you're battling on beat, they would be like uh, two two rounds on beat, third acapella. It started like that. Fight. Eventually, it went Whoa. from that to like fully acapella. We went, but the transition started in like 03, 04. Yeah. I mean, but like 02, it was still nobody was talking about acapella. You had to like rip a beat and you couldn't ask for any beat. Like you couldn't be like, yeah, let me get the. Um, the DJ just threw just gotta, you a beat, and you oof. better just fucking rap to it. If it's fast, it's slow, you're Think, fucked. You just rap. You know what I mean? You, you had one or two chances. So I would murk people off, and I didn't have a name. And that's how it started. They were like, so what do you go by? And I was I don't fucking know. It's like, you're a disaster. You're a fucking disaster. Like, you just tore this whole place up. And that's how I got the name from just being. Because I used to come into these cribs. It was a rush. It was an adrenaline. I would know there would be people rapping there. And I just knew my energy was different, bro. I was a new, I was a brand new form of hip hop. Like, I was very aggressive, loud, and powerful. And I had, like, l lyrics, too. Like, so I had, like, a big vocabulary already when I was young. That combination of that with the aggressive craziness wasn't really... People right. weren't familiar with it. I was throwing shit off. Like, when, wherever I would go, people would be like, holy shit. Sometimes I'd win battles by not saying much. Just... Da -da 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 -da. People would be like, ah! <laughs> you know, this is back in the day, you know, you didn't have to say that crazy shit. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, it was just like the energy. Yeah, like, I would it is. kill yeah. people off energy. I would come in and wipe, Fire. wipe house parties clean. And that's how I got that's the dope. disaster name. And from there, you know, I just started. Disaster came to life. Yeah. And then I just, I never, Fire. I never went back. Yo, by the way, if you're watching right now, this is the Danza Project episode number. Landon, damn it, Landon, what episode are we on? 108, 108, 108 episodes. Dude. I'm so proud of the progress we did to be 108 episodes in. We got guys like Disaster in the building. Make sure you're hitting that subscribe button, the like button, sharing it, telling a friend to tell a friend, all that cool shit. Do that. A disaster, you said they could send me money too? 
<laughs> yeah, you should uh, press the donate button and send me some money. You should have it with the option where they could donate, man. Because yeah. I spent a lot of money getting this shit to getting this shit off the ground, making it look beautiful. Yeah, bro, God you damn should, it, man! Your your fans will support you, man. So People disaster is someone that, for me, that energy that you brought into battle was like. Oh, I'm gonna start watching all. So it started when I the first time I saw. I brought you. all my problems into battle rap with me, like all my Ooh. fucked up childhood. I'd bring it into every battle. That's Good. why I was like this from the beginning. It definitely made me go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> like the first battle I seen seen of you, I was like, wait a second. You know, like the, the YouTube went crazy for me. Yeah, like I had to go. I had to go through and look at every fucking I got too battle. Much shit and, out there now. <laughs> how many battles have you been in now? Well, I mean. You know, the ones that are recorded on YouTube, like, it's like 120 or something, bro, which is, like, one of the highest numbers wow. on Earth. I do have probably the craziest resume on Earth. There's a couple of battlers who have more battlers battles than me. Like, there's a couple of battlers that have, like, more numbers on that. Like, there's somebody with a 200. Like, you know what I mean? Um, the thing is, it's the level of opponents. Like, out of my 120 uh, fucking opponents, bro, Calibre. I've had the most, like, crazy dudes on Earth. You know what I mean? Like... I think nobody has a resume that big with that much quality would and love, balance to each other. I don't know if anybody would feel comfortable, like your average Joe Schmo would feel comfortable getting on a stage with you either. You know, like you got You'd you got surprised. a different people, type of energy. People, people, people have like dog. I've done some crazy shit. There's this guy named Rick Glassman. I battled once, a comedian. I go to a, like uh, <laughs> I go to like a comedy uh, laugh factory or whatever the yeah, comedy set, yeah. f- comedy store, or whatever the fuck it's called. I'm sitting in the back watching the show, bro. And the comedian just fucking just points me out of the crowd and goes, oh, shit, disaster's at my show. (laughs) And, like, I'm sitting in the back. Like, I'm with my girl. Like, I didn't even know I'm about to be approached or anything weird's going to happen. You know what I mean? I'm just here. Like, we're having drinks at the table. And he's like, you know what? I think it would be a good idea if I battle you at my own show right now. Uh, and I'm just like, what? Uh, and he's just like, come up on stage. Like, and just makes me come up on stage and battle him. Can he actually spit? I he mean, tried to rap, and I fucking started bodying him, and he started getting mad. No. Like, he literally got mad as That fuck. is a no. skill that people that don't he got understand mad as fuck of the battle rap. Yeah, he got mad as fuck and started, just was just like, all right, get off the stage. Like, he just got really angry. Uh, and, and, like, it's crazy. I called him Bob Saget. <laughs> because he had the So the what glasses. is the history with Bob Saget? Yeah, the gla- it's, just, it's just that face. It's it's him. It's the Colbert face. It's that fucking, that, that fucking, just don't, that, that face is really punchable. But uh, I think Bob Saget passed away, RIP Bob Saget. So that's Bob. not anything to him. But like that just typical fucking Rick Moranis you, face. You, you know what? I, I, you, fucking... <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I just, it's, uh, they, they, the, the, them faces always got something to say, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm not going to lie. I genuinely feel like uncomfortable saying Bob Saget. <laughs> like it's because it's so close to the F word. <laughs> <laughs> Saget! You goddamn Saget! <laughs> it really is, though. Like, every time I say it, I'm like, better say it right. Oh, you man, know what I mean? So funny. <laughs> better say better not fuck up my words on yeah, this yeah. one. Better not say Bob. Nah, but like, them motherfuckers, they, yeah, they, they seem to be my arch enemies, man. I don't know so, what it is. <laughs> so you didn't cut this guy any slack, basically? No, I fucking ripped his little fucking... Triple boosted, vaccinated, courting ass up. <laughs> Triple boosted. She fucking tore him into shreds, bro. And he just wanted me off the stage. <laughs> yeah. Hey, at the end of the so, day. So what I was going to say is that is an incredible skill that battle rappers possess is the ability to sit on there and listen to somebody talk that much shit about you and keep care. a straight fucking face and then have your round ready. Fuck. Yeah, you wonder, like, I tell people, like, when they try to, like, hurt my feelings in person, they're, you're a, you're a, da, da, da. it's just like, hey, bro, I battle rap. Like, I hope you understand that there's nothing you can say to try me hard. that's going to even affect me right Come now. On. I don't get, people have said Come worse on. than what you said, and they rhymed it. <laughs> like, do you, do you know how <laughs> fucked up that is? To hear something rhyme <laughs> fucked up about you, like, two yeah, things that uh, are uh, fucked up about you coming together in harmony in this artistic way, it makes you feel like God hates you. Yeah, and it you came know? with a crowd. <laughs> yeah, and it comes with a crowd. Crowd, oh, my bad. I'm gonna knock the camera over. Comes with a crowd and all that. Nah, that shit is crazy, bro. Like, you know, know, we get thick skin, bro. What was the first uh, marquee battle that you've had? I would say me and DNA. We had Drake come up. 
One day I wake up in the morning. By the way, DNA will be here tomorrow. I think I'm throwing. I, I, I think I'll, I'll throw up some racks That's and say, right, "Fuck dog. it, go at it." Me and him again, damn. Me and DNA are like gonna be the guys that like battle each other forever. Like we'll be like because it 50s was such a good fucking again. battle. And it, we battled twice, by the way. So we battled again. But after. we're talking about the same one, right? Yeah, the first okay, one. Yeah, the one that Drake came to. So like yeah. that one, I wake up one morning and all my fans are going ham on Twitter and they're like, "Drake is following you," and I. I seen it and I was like, damn. And I was just getting familiar with who Drake is, but I know he's a big superstar and he's about to blow up. You know what I mean? This is right. like in 2011 or like at the end of 2010. He's just coming out and he's like fucking known, but I'm not like paying attention to shit. So like I see that it's Drake and I'm like, damn, it's crazy ass guy from Canada, Drake. You know what I mean? I was like, cool. And I just didn't think nothing of it. And then my boy was like, what are you fucking stupid? Fucking message him. <laughs> DM him something. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I remember I DM'd him like, thank you or some shit. Right. And like, he hit me back and was like, bro, like I'm fucking, you don't understand. I, I, I look up to you and battle rap and fucking, I love this shit. And I'm the biggest fan of this shit ever. This shit fucking inspires me. I, I watch this shit all the time. He was saying crazy shit. And he's just like, my bucket list is to see you live one day. So I was just like, damn, right. that's fucking crazy, right? So I kept that in mind. As me and DNA were arguing about where the fuck we were going to battle, we end up deciding to battle in Toronto because it was middle ground and it was neutral. It wasn't in Cali or New York. So it was just mm -hmm. the perfect place for me to settle, settle all our beef, you know what I mean? When that shit got decided, I messaged Drake. And I was like, yo, I'm about to be in your city. You know what I mean? Like, I'm battling in your city, bro. Pull the fuck up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Remember him hitting me back up and saying, you know what, man? I got a busy weekend that week, man. Fuck. That I'm releasing Take Care. Like, the, he was launching the album. And he's like, but if I can and if I'm around, I'm going to pull up. And that's the last I heard from him. And then we didn't talk. I didn't hit him back up and bug him about it no more. And I just went about my business. I had a battle. I wasn't thinking about shit but killing DNA. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, so yeah. I get to the battle with DNA, bro, and I'm outside, bro, and he pulls up, and it's the most retarded shit ever because I didn't even know it was him. And then he just got close and just kept on pulling up, and I kept on looking like, who the fuck is causing all this commotion? Everyone is, like, taking pictures and losing their mind. And then he fucking gets in my face type of shit while I'm preparing. Like, I'm on the side. I, it's like 10 more minutes, and I'm about to go in and battle DNA, bro. Like, and he just, what's up? I'm like, what the fuck? I was like, what? What are you doing here? <laughs> I was like, you came. I was like, you're crazy. You really did it. He's like, yeah, man. He's like, you're going to kill it, man. Good shit. And I'm like, man, you had to do this 10 minutes before my battle shit. Like, I was fucking hella nervous, too. Like, I was like, damn, this fool is Now, be honest with me. We had Mook up here last week, yeah. two weeks ago. Mook said that he, Drake always hits him up to saying that he'll kill him in a battle. I can see that. Do you, do you see... I can see that. What, what, what happened? He's never told me that. But but what do you think Drake's happens never if he said decided to, to me, step in the ring? Honest. You're an honest guy. What would happen with Drake? If he stepped in the ring. I don't know. Like, I, I will tell you something about Drake. He is fucking tuned in with what battle rap is. He's not an idiot when it comes to that. And he has bars. Yeah. I don't know how he would do. I. It's hard. What if he asked you to battle him? Would you go easy? Would I go easy on him? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, probably. I mean, I wouldn't. It's not that I would go easy. I wouldn't like slaughter. I wouldn't disrespect him like I could. I guess. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Because there's obviously the respect. But you would there. have to. Does not really. The world would be waiting. Nah, I don't to have to because I'm talented enough to not do that. I'm talented okay. enough to whip somebody's ass without doing that. And especially if someone's giving me an opportunity, I don't know how hard I could, like, how dirty I could get with them. Right. Like someone like Naturally. Drake giving you a fucking battle, bro. You're gonna go and do what? Talk about his son and fucking like you got like, a Floyd Mayweather, like, Conor McGregor, that shit. Nah, you got to be a fucking real dude and trust in your skill and for just sure, be able to sure. just and just you know, still you know, get the Thesaurus point. is still to this day to me is the most talented battle rapper ever because he he's Who? able to th Thesaurus okay and he's able to like go into a room and 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 turn everybody like he 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 went into a room full of like sensitive like liberals and like complete gay crowd and lesbians bro and battled the gay sailor in front of them 
And in this place, but if you even say the F word or anything line, near it, bro, line. you're fucking getting carried out on a stretcher. They're going to kill you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like these purple hair freaks will come out and fucking stab you. If you say shit. what, Saget? Yeah, if you oh, say Bob Saget yeah, in there, yeah. they're coming up with shanks and right. beating you with dildos to death. You know what I mean? <laughs> so like... <laughs> Not exaggerating. Yeah, they, and they're going to fuck you up, right? So like this fool goes in there and has a way around it, bro. He was able to like completely diss him without offending nice. the fucking crowd. Without offending the crowd. Like, if you could do some shit like that, then you are an extremely <laughs> talented individual. And I feel like in this point in my fucking career, I'm not about to scoop that low to win a battle. What? So you could think that I needed to do that to beat right. you? Right. Like, I might just beat you creating metaphors about trees. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> like the branch that, fu- like, <laughs> you know what I'm uh, saying? Yeah. Like, I don't gotta do all that. For sure. Now, now, but he would do good. I now think. he's there. Your rap, you're you're battling DNA. Did that make? Do you feel that that had any influence to make that that much more of a? You're talking about one of the greatest battles in the history of battle rap. Yeah, you think that he caused a little bit of that? Probably with the crowd. Maybe not for me and DNA, since our material was going to be the same regardless if he was there or not. So, like, that's not going to change what me and DNA did, right? But it could change but the your energy, crowd, right? Our energy a little bit. Maybe we're more excited. But I think the crowd, the crowd, he changed the fucking crowd. For sure. Yeah, because yeah. in, in their heads, everyone's they be hyped. Like, if, they're sitting next if to Drake, Drake's bro. Drake's watching And he's this? a Canadian fucking hero, bro. Like, you know what I mean? He, sure. We're in Toronto. In Canada, yeah, they're yeah. fucking next to him, bro. Like, everybody was probably overreacting. Yeah, the <laughs> the, the he's, he's the president. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That you was know? the real president of Canada. So they probably... What is it? It's not called the president. What is Prime it minister, called? But yeah. Prime minister. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but like it's the same shit. <laughs> fucking, um, fucking puppets. <laughs> um, <laughs> so like, yeah, no, it was crazy, bro. It definitely, it, and it was one of the most influential, impactful battles of all time in battle rap. Probably the most impactful battle rap of, battle of all time, single-handedly. If you were to judge, how were you judging that one? I mean, I obviously won, but like... It, it, are, are, you, are you 3-0'd? Are you 2-1? Are you? A lot, a lot of people think it's 3 0 because at the end of the day, my writing was better throughout the whole battle, but DNA did something incredible in that battle, and he just, his energy was so amazing, and he was able to hold up with me when he was wasn't supposed to and a lot of the shit that he was saying wasn't even making sense but he was able to rebuttal crazy shit and he was able to put me in my place in a lot of ways different ways and just he's an amazing opponent bro like I feel like people that think he won I won't even argue with them you know what I mean like he he gave me like the most fucking exhilarating battle I've ever been in and it just felt like it wasn't gonna end it was the longest battle ever and we were staying he's just so he's I respect him because DNA is one of the few dudes that's really one of us, bro. Real battlers, bro. There's very few of us left. There's about like, there's there's probably 20,000 battlers in the world. And out of those 20,000, there's probably only like 20 real ones, bro. Like, and he's one of them. Like, I'm talking about the real battlers that are from the cloth. The real ones that are intangible, like in a, in, in a way where you just throw them in any scenario and there's really nothing you could do to them. Like, DNA is one of those dudes. He'll just, like, he's like water. You can't, most battlers have to fucking study their shit and come rehearse it, spit their three rounds, and they're out of there, bro. DNA is somebody that you're just, he's a resilient person that you put him in any situation, he's going to fight. And he's going to fight you off. And he's right. he's crazy. Like, the f- way he was able to fight off my shit was nuts because my shit was so much better put together than his. Like, it's almost like he freestyled most of the fucking battle. It's insane. It was wild. <laughs> his fight, he's crazy. Because uh, that's how I viewed it as a fan. I'm like, oh my he's God, how do crazy. you come back from that? Yeah. And then he came back really well. Bro, and, like, and then, and then yeah. you come out with the second round, and I'm like, damn, now you can't come back from he that He beat one. me at my own game, too. Like, I, and, and that's the thing. Like, I feel like, obviously, I outwrote him in that battle. You know what I mean? But like, then he like out freestyled me. He did. He <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like, I was about... I, and I, even though like people still feel like the Prince of Persia rebuttal is the best rebuttal in the battle, because it fucking got the most reaction. My one fucking freestyle that I did. And I freestyled a little bit more than that. But that, that was like, in the beginning of round two. Yeah, but that one made up for a lot. Of, he 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 had like six or seven haymakers in a row, bro. Like he kept on, he kept on freestyling, bro, to the point where I didn't even think he had written. Like at one point, I was just like, "Fuck it, this guy's just going off the top." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you had that Prince of Persia line. My shit had was Drake all written. Written. Yeah, no, yeah. Like that, that, Side, besides that, but when that, everybody saw that part, written. it was just like, like we, as a fan watching that and seeing his reaction, just like, oh running off it's just yeah like, yeah when he dipped into the you crowd. know like everybody else is sitting there like 
Yeah. I'm witnessing something here. No, nah, that was that was a crazy moment, man. And just like, you know, having like affecting like big artists like that is a crazy feeling, bro, because it gives you a sense of validation because it's like, why right. is this guy gravitating towards this? I must be the shit. Now you have that moment. Yeah. With Drake. Talk to us about M. After that, after after Drake. The first thing that happened actually after Drake was the following year with, with the DNA shit, I battled cannabis. And like... I used to love cannabis so much, man. And, and, and like, that, we all did. Yeah. And I still do. But like, he was terrifying to me. When we set the battle up, I was shaking. There was probably <laughs> nobody on earth that has ever made me feel like that before a battle. Nobody. I've never went into a battle thinking, you know what, I'm probably going to die. Like, I've never thought that for <laughs> anybody except cannabis. And it was the complete opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, I thought I was dead, bro. Like, you have to understand, at one point I was writing, all that incredible shit I wrote, I felt like it was garbage. <laughs> I was imagining some shit from him that's so crazy that, like, the first eight bars, none of my shit's going to matter anymore, you yeah, know? Like, no, it's man. cannabis. Yeah. I'm, I'm just mind, expecting the most design like blind fury. Yeah, just, I'm ins- expecting the most insane multis about me and my character assassination. Like, and he just didn't do that. And it was he's a very not a battler. Yeah, Jumped it, into it, the wrong scene. And and you know they made the, the big mistake they made. Cannabis would have had a great fucking performance. The big mistake they made him and his manager. Shouts out to M80. Um, is they came up to me before the fucking battle. Well, not cannabis, but his manager. And I don't know how fucking aware they were not to say this to me, but the guy comes up to me and he's like, hey, man, so uh, cannabis is here. Um, He's ready, but he's not going to go on stage and rap if there's a time limit. Just out of nowhere. It was three minute rounds, bro. We already decided the fucking thing was three minute rounds. That's it. He was nervous. The guy comes up. He says unlimited. Oh, no. And I look at him, and I'm thinking <laughs> yes. in my head, yeah, exactly. I'm, I look at him, and I'm uh, like, is this guy fucking nuts? Like, I'm thinking, like, this is a right. joke, because I know I'm, at this point, too, everyone in the world knows I'm, besides Mook, there's nobody that can rap this long. Where yeah, the, yeah. Me and Mook are probably the most and nuttiest there's nobody that earth. hates you know a I mean? time limit more. Yeah, we don't fuck with time limits, because yeah. we come from the cloth of you had to rap till you stopped, and whoever stopped was the fucking loser. There was no time clock to save you. That's why I respect Mook, because he comes from that yeah. rap, 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 rap. Somebody's going to stop or run out of bars. That's the loser, not the person that respects the fucking clock. You know what I mean? Whoever fucking runs out of bars, you suck. <laughs> like you know what I mean so um, where were we though um, so cannabis uh, oh, so yeah comes up to so you. he comes up to me and he goes yeah unlimited in my head I'm like these guys are suicidal I'm like nah this guy's killing himself I was like no way so I'm being wow. the nice guy I am cause I'm not a piece of shit I looked at him I'm like listen to me bro I probably shouldn't be telling you this right now <laughs> But you don't want to do that. Like, that's what you do. I'm not the person you want to do this with. I told him this. I'm, I, you're lucky I'm telling you this. Like, you I'm not the guy. This would have worked with anybody else, but I'm not the guy you want to do this with, bro. I'm telling you. Like, because in my back of my head, I have 9, 10, 11 rounds. So I'm like, you don't want to fucking do this. You know what I mean? And he's like, nope, this is what we want to do. We're 100% sure. And it's the only way the battle is going to happen. I'm like, all right. <laughs> fucking unlimited then I, I, I so once you. we went in there and it became unlimited cannabis realized the the fatigue that you get from being a battle this is what mook does to destroy his opponents by the way like because he knows stamina is a serious thing bro once you're up there with the motherfucker for after like 20 minutes pass bro the average person is gonna want to go home like, it's just how it feels, bro. Like, it's just not... It's a long day. Dog. It, yeah. it doesn't feel... Like, to you, you're watching it. You you feel like the guy is just standing there and everything looks normal. But, bro, it's, it's like being on a flight or something. Like, it's just... Yeah. You want to go home. Like, now, being on the stage with someone like me and Mook, 20 minutes pass, and it just feels like we're just getting started. And then 30 minutes pass, 40 minutes pass, we're still rapping. It's like at that point, like you know, you can't fuck with us. You know what I mean? And and it's kind of it's kind of that's what I felt like I, when I battled Solcon, bro. Solcon did the same shit with me. Solcon tried to go like long winded, and I rapped. Check this out. I did three rounds that were a total of one hour of material. 
I memorized an hour of material. Fifteen minute, ra- a fourteen minute round, an eleven minute round, and a thirty minute round. Come on, I, I literally. It, Your it, last <laughs> round with DNA was super long, huh? Your last round with DNA. My last round with DNA was probably like ten minutes. Ten, that's it. Pro- probably, or that, maybe that, even more. Maybe that, like yeah, eleven you, or yeah, twelve. You went wild in that. Like round. it's just. I just know that, like, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of people could write dope shit. Back in the days, that's how we used to bust people for being frauds. Like, today, you can't do it. Back in the day, we would catch the frauds. Frauds would come to parties, and somebody would be like, yo, I got the illest dude ever, and, like, your man sucks, and, like, trust me, this is the new shit right here. And then the dude would rap, and you would hear, like, a round from dude and be like, holy fuck, who is this guy? This is the craziest shit I've ever heard. And it's like, all right, give us another one. Uh-huh. And it's like it slowly it starts, <laughs> and it's like give us another one, and it's like well, no, see, give us know. one more, <laughs> yeah. and it's like oh, and, it's, and then they start with the flow, yo, ready to go, and I'm uh, yo, my bro over here, his name is Mo, and it becomes that shit, and you're like ah ah fraud, <laughs> fucking fucking caught you, you know that's how you used to buzz people. That's gotta be because you'd be feeling. like because man, everybody yeah, act like man, they were go another down. fuck around, mm-hmm. go another fuck around, because you couldn't just be like today like you. You knew it was two or th- three rounds and like you get to go home safe back then like you might have just just thought you bodied him and spit your best shit and the dude will be like do it again and then you're just like fuck <laughs> start pulling out shit from middle school suckers the real and that's how that's where it began yeah. Was in middle school and high school and people started doing the bullshit cafeteria shit. I, I, I've, I've definitely caught we, I spoke about this before but you know catching people that we're freestyling. Oh, th- that was another thing. If we even remotely sensed you were freestyling, you're you're out. Like it's like boo, fuck off, fuck shut up, and then like the dude just calls you. you a fucking writer and a biter, and you're done. Like and it's terrible win. in battle rap when that is your when you don't have the freestyle ability because when somebody trips up and they have to go back all the way back and it sounds yeah. like it's like oh, I said. And it's just like, all right, yeah, you don't have I mean, the ability to improvise, you're kind of fucked when that happens. Nobody cares anymore, though, big dog. Like, that's the problem with battle rap. That's why GTX, I'm trying to bring that fucking old school shit back because it has became template mainstreamish. It, everybody can rap without the core fucking things that make you a battle rapper, and it's okay. So you can come into a battle, not spit a single fucking freestyle bar. And I'm guilty of it, too, now because I adapted to it, but I'm not going to anymore. And I'm going to incorporate this shit all the time. I'm slowly going to start freestyling and get more comfortable doing it. You know what I mean? Like, because right. I kind of just gave up on it, bro, to be honest with you. Like, just, it's pointless because you're you're timed and you got, like, this much right. time to spit some shit. You don't want to come up there and do that. So they made it that way. You know what I mean? Like. But if they allow battle rap to be fluid again, we we uh, we we uh, bring it back. But that's what we need people like you for to Hollow's bring the culture back. good at back. that. Sharon is good at that. There's a lot of Charlie Clips, bro. There's a lot of these guys. DNA also, bro. These are guys that preserve the culture, bro. This is why I'm always have respect for them because I consider them mm-hmm. actually hardcore, real fucking actual like foundational battle rapper. What's your Mount Rushmore battle rap? I can't tell you that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you can't tell me because you don't want to put it out there or you can't tell you because you don't I mean, know? my original Mount Rushmore was always Mook Lux and Il Mac and Thesaurus. Like, that was when I was a kid, but, like, it changed. Like, I don't know. Like, I just, I feel like those guys were the official guys when we were younger and there was, like, honorable mentions like Iron Solomon and... You I want to get into Iron Solomon later, but I, I still don't. I, I also don't want to skip past the. Today it's hard. I, don't, to I also don't want to uh, skip it. past the cannabis shit. Yeah, I mean the cannabis shit. Like just, just to put perspective for you, bro, it was really fucking huge. Wyclef called my phone after that shit. Like fucking, why you gotta do him like that and all that shit, bro? <laughs> my man. That's, that's fucking. <laughs> like, yo, pulled that's, out the notepad. It was crazy. Everybody fucking talked about it from Buster Rhymes to like, bro. There wasn't a single person I didn't hear from about it. You know what I mean? How was Q-tip that on your side? Me out. Huh? How did you feel on your side when the man's pulling out? No I problems. was actually trying to talk to him in the battle. You could see it inside. If, like, you pay attention, you can hear me going, no, 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 don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> like, I was literally telling him, put it away. Like, as I knew he was going to pull it out, I, actually, because his, his, he asked his boy for it, and I knew he had his notepad. Like, Damn. when he asked his boy for it, I was like, man, he doesn't realize how bad this is going to look. Yeah. So I was telling him, like, don't do it. Like, But I couldn't be loud about it. I was just under my yeah. breath telling him, don't do it, don't do it. x on the... He yeah. just wasn't seeing it, bro. He was wearing but those that glasses. Moment, <laughs> that moment was huge for Battle Web. It was a big separating point because a lot of people thought cannabis 
was somebody that people should be worried about. Yeah, bro, I became so popular in England after that battle. I remember going to England and it was just like, yo, man's battle cannabis, yo. <laughs> yo, look, look, it's Dunn who battle cannabis. Like everywhere <laughs> I went, like it got to the point where somebody would be like, yo, the man who battled cannabis. I know, bro, I know. Like I'd finish the sentence for them. Yeah. <laughs> like I just know people in England used to just recognize me off that battle. It shows how fucking in tune the motherfuckers are with hip hop, bro. I love the British fan base, bro. That's they're real. amazing. They're wild. Oh, they're the most underrated. Like, UK fucking rap is the shit, man. Like, Americans need to get... Americans are fucking bigoted as fuck, bro. This, uh, this, we're, 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 this is a xenophobic place, bro. Completely jaded. Yeah, bro. <laughs> like, we're, anything we outside it. of here, we're just like, yeah, ha, the guys that are... It's like we make fun of them and, like, make fun of their accents. And we're just... We don't we don't have a culture yet, bro. Like, it's crazy. They, they, there is none here. It's just a Bro, London is like... <laughs> African culture, Arab culture, like Indian culture mixed into like, it's the most, it's diverse as hell. Yeah. Toronto's like that too, though. That's dope. So you're, you're in there with cannabis. You have that battle go through. Another big battle in your career was, which a lot of people look at was, what was the hugest moment was Cassidy. Cassidy, yeah. And... The Cassidy shit, in reality, was very controversial. It was. It was insane. I don't know how comfortable you are even feel to talk about that situation. Oh, I have a fuck. Fuck yeah, I am. Yeah. It's 10 years <laughs> ago. You know, Ca- Cassidy's going to be up here on Friday. Ago. Yeah, first of all, it's 10 years ago. So, like, that needs to be put in perspective. All yeah, this right. damn and time flies, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely a, it's a learning experience, bro. You know what I mean? I brought Cassidy in the game, bro. It's a, he's a stripe under my belt, bro. I brought him into the shit. I'm the reason why... He battles now. You know what I mean? Word. Nobody would have been able to bring him back. Now, Cassidy is somebody I look at. Obviously, I respect him immensely as an artist and everything that he's done. And, and, and you know, like, I can't wait to interview him and have a conversation with him. However, when I think about the people who he battled, I can't really come up with many names. Well, no, he did, he did some shit. He battled Hitman, Arsenal, Goods. Me. I'm talking about in the... So, so let me... Let oh, me before that? You mean before that? Before that, when I was younger and oh, yeah, I yeah. was listening to rap, everybody's like, oh, he battled all these people. Yeah, yeah. But I it's mean, like the only person that. I ever knew was Freeway. And yeah, I never I knew mean, Freeway as being We didn't consider rap. that real battle rap. But, like, I mean, for the streets, it was big, though, like what he did. I just... We didn't consider that battle rap because at the time when he was doing all that, battle rap was already big and it was already something. You couldn't just be doing it at the studio at your house. You had to be part of the tournaments and the fucking real shit that was happening, bro, with Super Nat, with Juice, all the real motherfuckers battling. You know what I mean? Battle rap was a thing. It wasn't just happening at the house. You know what I mean? So, like, I don't I don't know in that regard, you know what I'm saying? But, like, since he's came back, he's kind of proved his, like, he, he's, taken, he's taken big matches against formidable opponents in front of serious hostile crowds. Because that's what I, when, sure. we, when we first battled, the one thing that I didn't respect about Cassidy was I was like, man, this fool, like, w- didn't finish the battle on stage. He got, he got killed on the stage, didn't finish it, and then had to put it in a room with all his friends and, like, the billionaire. Don't rush past that, though. Like, so you, like, you, you guys battled at night? Yeah, and, and then they woke me up in the morning, and he started doing funny shit online saying what I'm scared to battle. Like, they got me that, up at, like, 9 a.m. to battle. what happened for the people like, that don't understand what happened with that battle the night basically prior? Basically, his people wouldn't get off the stage. They wouldn't, they, they wouldn't clear the stage so me and him could rap. He wouldn't tell them to move, and the security were like, fuck it, and they shut the whole fucking thing down. So, uh, and, and, then he, like then, and then he, like, did the reverse psychology thing with me in the battle where he blamed me for it. He's like, then your people wouldn't get off the stage. It was his first line, so he could, like... He's, he's a smart guy. He, he, he did that. Like, but anyways, the point is he structured an environment that was comfortable for him so he could get his shit off. You get what I'm saying? And he got his shit off, right? So after that, I was like, damn, I don't know if he'll ever get his shit off in front of a crowd. And that's why I didn't respect it. But then he went and did it. So that you're talking about the next day? After no, I'm saying after that battle happened and we did it the next day, I still was like Cassidy didn't come back to battle rap. But so and my brain, what I'm trying to get to is that's a battle that a lot of people would sit there and you you they'll they'll debate it. Well, I think uh, Cassidy. No, that's fine. All, All I'm saying is he didn't come back and battle in front of the crowd, bro. The battle rap crowd. So he didn't come back to battle rap. In my battle, he came back to a room with his homies in it. You understand that's but what, different, what was bro. That what what I'm trying to get to is. I, it, 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 it sounds like damn near like it was a setup to catch you at a weak moment. 
For sure, like they they definitely did that, but whatever. So they just called you in the morning to wake up. Yeah, and- bro. Like, and I I didn't fucking I already spit one of my rounds and had to restructure the shit. It was whack as fuck. Oh, I couldn't wow. even bring my friends in there. It was him and all his people. Like, it's all good. It's cool. I'm not even tripping on that. My yeah. whole thing is, I'm telling you, this is where I gained respect for him. Okay, is that I was thinking, oh, this is all he can do. Like, he could come back and rap in front of his homies. That's not impressive to me. You know what I mean? Like, to, to do that, anybody could do that. Like, you have to come back in front of this crowd, win the battle rap crowd over. That was what you were supposed to do. And that's why the first night, I, when we, I did a round, he did a round, I destroyed him the first night. And, like, he just couldn't, couldn't get it out. The crowd wasn't fucking with any of it. They literally booed the shit out of him, bro. And it was really bad bars, bro. He was slow. His pace was off. It wasn't working for him. And you could tell he was you know, visibly distraught from what was happening and he wasn't comfortable. He needed to be in an environment where he was comfortable. Then he battled Hitman and he battled Arsenal and Goods and he literally got in front of a hostile-ass crowd, bro. So, yeah. I don't know. I feel like he did his shit. Yeah, I, and that's what yeah. I'm trying I to I feel get like to, he yeah. did his shit. Like, he he eventually, like, and I feel like he's only getting better too. Like, But, but the thing is about Kaz, he doesn't battle enough. So, like, it's going to be hard for him to really get there in time. I feel like he needs to battle way more. He needs to do, like, five battles in a row, and then he'd get to that spot, like, where he's as good as the other street dudes because he's not in my bracket, bro. Like, the type of shit that I do, like, me and Cass, we're not even in the same fucking field. Like, bro, I do battles in other <laughs> languages. He's a street battler. You know what I mean? Right. You got to think about Mook and Geechee and Rum and Lux and those type of people in that environment because those are the people that he needs to – figure out yeah like that's the opponents that he should be yeah. matching up against yeah because that's it's more his shit the people that grew up on him we didn't grow up on cassidy we grew up on a whole different style of battle rap you know what i mean we fucked with the street shit but it wasn't what got us to start battling street shit has started later it was just a branch off the shit you know what i mean it's not the original form of battling the original no. form of battling started you know dj fucking beatboxing like just battle rap bro <laughs> cypher and fucking rapping on the spot going off yeah. to a beat like you know what i mean and, and you have all these like huge promo companies that try to switch everything up like you know like th- that it has to be this way or we want it to look a certain way we're gonna I do hate this at the shit. beginning of the show what was that relationship i believe it's what lush that set up the with, with what with the who? set up that cassidy event yeah, like, that shit was ridiculous, bro. Because, like, they brought in a billionaire who doesn't know shit about battle rap. <laughs> and, like, he's just like, I want to have, like, people coming down from the ceiling. And, oh, oh like, we'll have a hologram of him over here. And he looks so big in front of the people. And, you know, fucking, I hate people with money. I fucking <laughs> hate rich people. I really do. Rich people suck dick. Like, I really do not <laughs> like them. Like, they always have these corny-ass ideas, and they're, they're sucking their own dick while they're saying them because they've made money in other places, so they think they know things like, oh, I own jets and companies. I'm going to come down. We're going to make a boxing ring, and then the battler will come down on some ropes. And it's like they think they're fucking intelligent, and they're not. Like, you're a fucking idiot. Shut up. Like, give me your fucking money and shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? That's, that, that's what hip-hop is. Like, you shut the fuck up. Cut the check. We're, we're in charge of this shit. Mm. We're going to fucking battle in a broke down warehouse and there might be cockroaches, bitch. There ain't what, we, it's not what you think it's going to be. You know what I mean? That's what I would have rather. The, the, me and Cassidy battling in the Belasco is fucking too much. I didn't want that shit, dog. It's too much lights, yeah. camera, action. It's mainstream as fuck. It's like a concert. Yeah. And when the fuck did battle rap become a concert like that? It takes away from the rawness. Sure. Of it. I mean, in, in a it's sense. It's an intimate feel. In it's supposed sense, to be intimate. Do, do you feel yeah. that in a sense, like in order for you guys to be respected and get the money that you deserve? That's the problem. The, the money. Like, we want the big bags, right? So these big fucking events have to happen where it's just chaotic as hell and you got like a fucking groupie ass crowd that's like in it, talking through shit. And like, it's hard to control big ass crowds, bro. It's chaotic. It's not meant for battle rap. Battle rap is a place where people got to be quiet and listen to the bars. Not sure. meant to be going crazy. It's not a concert, bro. We're not meant to have liquor there. Like, I don't allow Ooh. alcohol at my events. I don't. But other other events do. Like, I don't know how URL and RBE do and all them, but I don't allow alcohol at my events, period. Are people allowed to record? Yeah, but I don't let them do it for too long. Right. <laughs> you want them to be here now, not... Yeah, or just release too much of our content. But yeah, like, absolutely, yeah. the alcohol is the most important shit to me. I was I actually surprised at watching all the shares <coughs> that you've posted of your previous battle. 
because of all the people that were recording. Yeah, I mean, I'll post that because it's just a little snippet. It's a good little commercial, and it gets the people traction and makes them feel involved. I don't got to be an asshole about okay. that. If somebody, like, fucking rips off my whole round and uploads it to fucking YouTube, we're going to have a fucking problem. That's the problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? And is that something that you're able to catch quick if they do Yeah, that? I mean, we could catch shit like that, yeah. I mean, in stuff like that, bro, people can't even find it in time by the time we drop this shit. So sometimes okay. I don't even trip on that. Like, as long as it's not, like, a main media outlet fucking bootlegging your shit. yeah. 10 people watch your shit before it drops, whatever, bro. <laughs> now, another big big battle, because because of what you said earlier, <coughs> you, you're, you're talking about your upbringing, and you're right, I cannot I cannot uh, name the place where you're at. Which, what you looking for over here? Oh, my phone, okay. yeah. Um, so, the, the upbringing. Yeah. You're seeing, and from your point of view in your world at that time, you're seeing I- I Israel drop bombs where you're from. You have a, I got traumatized. You have that. a battle yeah. with Iron Solomon. Oh, you're talking about the Iron Solomon battle. Uh, do, 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 because because do, that's that's kind of wild to think like dark. the the thought the thoughts that were probably going through your head at that time had to be a little bit like shaky. Yeah, <laughs> the Iron Solomon battle made me dig really deep into a period of time where if you were Kanye West and you spit that line or any of those lines <laughs> yeah they would have ended my fucking entire life but you know in this scenario the the opponent has the equal opportunity to say things to me so it was less nobody of, tries to le- come at, at you for that, right, those of, rounds now huh nobody tries to come at you no nah, because everybody now. knows it's 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 hip hop because if they were if they were to feel that way they would be hypocrites because Everybody gets dissed in battle rap. Right. You know what I mean? Kind of missed the point. Yeah, everybody gets dissed in battle rap. It would, and, and, and the opponent is accepting of it. Of course. You know, like he's I, doing the same shit to me. Absolutely. Like, yeah, I mean, he was saying a lot of crazy shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, if anything, you got to worry about some fucking Arabs being a little bit too fucking, you know what I mean? Like, the other way. Like, chill out! Yeah. Yeah. Just a fucking <laughs> battle, dickhead. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like, that was rough. Yeah, because, like, he, he said some shit. Like, I didn't really talk about, like, my shit was, like, very surface about, like, jokes. But then, like, I got into, like, the Israeli shit. Like, I got into that shit seriously, yeah. obviously. <laughs> but, like, he, like, was saying shit, like, about the Quran and stuff like that. Like, I didn't talk about the Torah and all that, like, like that. Like, I wasn't saying nothing bad like yeah. that. You were saying something. No, shit. I mean, I respect religion yeah. itself. Like, I really do. I'm... Um, Abrahamic religion also. So Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, is, it's all under under my umbrella. So, like, I respect all of it because we're part of that. And, like, so, but, you know, when it comes to, like, governments, <laughs> certain governments, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm going right. to talk about certain things, you know, I'm not going to be quiet about it, straight, especially if I have straight. the opportunity. I'm not this activist that's out there, like, talking about this shit every day, too. Like, so people know it's not, like, it's not like my whole identity, but it's like something that I'm going to give you a piece of if we're battling. Like, that's it. I'm going to fuck you up with this. I'm never going to get the opportunity <laughs> to say this again. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah, you got to strike a few cores. Man. Dog, and I'm going to be real with you, man. Like, I still, like, I feel like I got affected from that forever. Like, you know, seeing, like, an Apache pull up and level a building in front of you, and you know there's kids inside of it. Absolutely. That's like, not something that's supposed bro, to just delete. Out of here, bro. Like, and we're talking about, like, the distances... We're talking about half a mile and less, like off a balcony, seeing it, like half a mile from a balcony. Just imagine what that looks like. 0.2 miles, 0.3 miles from a balcony. It's pretty damn fucking close, bro. Glass shattered in my fucking building, in my, in my, in my apartment. The whole shit came down. Jeez. So not that far, yeah. you know, like right there, bro. I used to live on the cusp of all that shit. Like I grew up in a fucking crazy area, bro. So how do you feel about... What happened to Kanye and that canceling and them forcing him to do all that shit? I think Kanye is a little stupid. For sure. I really do. I do. I think just the way he talks and what what his point is and what he's trying to say, like, I I don't even feel like that. Like, I don't, I I feel like he's, he's so extreme about every opinion he has that he might not even mean what he's trying to say. It's like, I don't know. For me, it's almost like watching a kid that, knows there's no consequences or thinks there's no consequences to the shit that he'll say. So he'll just say the craziest shit. Like when a kid right. walks in and tells like somebody, ah, your mom is dead. 
You know, he's like that guy. Like, they'll just say the craziest fucking shit. And he's just in his own kid world, and he doesn't think it means anything. But, like, he's not thinking about other people's feelings. So do you agree with them stripping all that money away from him? No, I don't. I don't I don't agree with any of that. And I think that that's that probably talk, talks to his point that he was trying to make. You know what I mean? But I I... I do agree with them thinking that he was – he's very influential, bro. He, If he says something, he's not clear about what he's saying, bro. Like, you got to be fucking responsible with your words. Who are you talking about specifically, dickhead? Name them. Why are you enveloping a whole fucking group of people under under an umbrella, bro? Like, for me, again, like – in that battle, I'm still attacking a certain group of people. I'm attacking really the group of people that are that are nationalists over there. You know what I mean? The ones that are blind to the fact that they're an occupying force in the Middle East. You know what I mean? There's a lot of them that understand what it is. You know what I mean? And a lot of them don't. They've de- demonized everyone around them. So that's the shit like that I'm talking about. He's talking about business and shit like that. And like, yeah, there's definitely that in business and there's nepotism in all businesses where certain people keep the shit amongst themselves and whatever business you get involved in, you know, you got to know that there's people that are going to keep it amongst themselves. And it goes back to like, bro, like you can't be mad. Like here's here. here, No, but here's Kanye mad. Like, okay, you represent Christianity. You're mad that Jews run Hollywood or whatever. Right. But, like, you, your belief already is that, like, Hollywood is fornication and sin and all these fucked up things about Hollywood and making movies and everything. And that's why Christians don't have a strong hand in that. And that's why other people exploited it because they realized we're going to do it. You know what I mean? You didn't want to do that. You didn't want to take over this industry. A group of people decided to take over that industry and became successful at it. You can't be really fucking mad at that, bro. Like, it's it's nuts. It's like when somebody do, has an idea, doesn't do it, and watches somebody else do it, and then they're mad at them and they're jealous. It's like, bro, you didn't do it. Like, your mad motherfuckers put in all their money to run this shit. They're the ones who put all their money behind it and believed in it when you thought that this was the devil and hell and all these other things and... You know, and now you're mad you have no control. But to be it's like, fair, bro. that was before his time that it was taken over. I mean, again, any business you go into, there's going to be a group of people that are passing the shit down amongst themselves, and it's just a nepotist thing. Like, it's basically just keeping it up in the family and in the circle. Bro, that's typical with any business. Like, it's kind of, I don't know. I feel like he should be more intelligent than that. I think, I feel like Kanye is my perfect example of intelligence is arbitrary, bro, and it has no limits. Like, anybody could be intelligent in different ways, bro. Like, an artist is super intelligent. Leonardo da Vinci was a fucking genius, you know what I mean? You could be intelligent at different things, and Kanye's suit is not really speaking. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And that's why he Public liked Trump. Speaking. Trump was the same fucking shit, bro. You know what I mean? Like, just... You want to fucking, like, believe what he's saying, but then he'll say some crazy-ass shit and make you realize, oh, this guy is fucking doesn't know how to talk like really a human hard, being. Really this hard guy's to not, he's, this guy. Bro, it <laughs> is, bro. But Kanye will say some fucking outrageous shit and just make you think. It's like, bro, you don't need to do that to fucking provoke thought. You don't need to fucking <laughs> offend people and hurt their fucking feelings because you're trying to provoke thought or to think of shit and then... So basically, know. you don't need to be a battle rapper in real life. Yeah, I'm not a battle rapper <laughs> yeah. in real life. Yeah. Like, that's the, the whole point. Like, I believe all that shit that he said is cool in a battle. Yeah, cool. You say that yeah. shit, go into a fucking battle and say that shit. When you're online saying it as if it's your way of life and you believe that shit and you want to influence people news. to think it, you're trying to fucking create, like, bro, there, people are going to be feel, uh, like, think of it like being Jewish and then hearing somebody demonizing your entire fucking... Like, you got to yeah. think of that. Like, bro, like, I, if I was, I would fucking be like, fuck this guy. You know what I mean? He has to, he has no fucking awareness. Just of, off principle. It's like, dude. Yeah, bro. What? And then in, in, in every fucking group and culture, there are incredible people. Exactly, and there are bad yeah. people. Like, what are you fucking doing? And, like, and, you're and literally, small you're literally dissing amazing people. And they're literally going to come back and be like, fuck you now. And like, not fuck with you. Like, there's okay. nothing productive about what he did. He has, he should have a PR or somebody tell him. Uh, and then he goes, yo, I watched, um, what did he say? Fucking, Jonah. I watched Jonah Hill and I love Jews again. Like, that's a fucking embarrassing, bro. That's oh why. 
Yeah. What? That's why? Like, <laughs> how about just get to know some, have like some friends and then go the hang out with their family with and you, fucking learn about you, their shit. And a little time that we spent together, I watched you with interact with a few people and it's like, it, it, it doesn't matter what culture you're like. I love all to know about them. You're, yeah. You know, and I feel like that's how everybody should be. Yeah, right? I love like, all cultures. There's, there's he, the, literally not a culture on earth that I dislike. I can't because it's a different flavor. It's so hard. It's like a different flavor. So it's like, oh, I love this. Now, there's obviously ones that I like more than others. You okay. know what I mean? Like certain areas, I love certain cultures from those areas the most. But ultimately, I love all of them, and we all have these similarities. And the people, the people that like people like him, that probably don't mean what he's saying. I feel like he deserves a lot of the backlash, not the extra shit where they're taking his money and all that other shit. That's fucking horrific, and that's crazy because you're not allowing people to change, and you're not allowing people to learn, and that's fucking insane. You know, what I mean, I even believe like somebody could be a racist or a fucked up person and change. I really do. I don't believe somebody could be the same forever. Like, it really takes certain things for people to realize, bro, sometimes. You know what I mean? I've watched people change, bro. I've, I, I, if I believe a killer could change and find God, bro. Like, yeah. everybody should have a chance. So this cancel culture is garbage. And I definitely don't support it. I'm not like anti-Kanye. You know what I mean? I feel like you're right. somebody that's changed. For sure. And at the end of the day, I do support Kanye because at the end of the day, he's a, he's a, he's a he's he's a success story of a black man in America, and watching what's happening to him is kind of another example of when white people are not happy with how a black man behaves with his money. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's obvious for someone from outside of the culture to see that. I don't have to be white or black to call that out. I can see that. I can see yeah. they're like, oh yeah, yeah. Well, you're being a little too black and free now. You know what I mean? Like, Ooh. even though there 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 is. Obviously, he's crossing the line, but, like, the, the punishment is what's predicating what I'm saying right now. Like, that punishment is weird. It's, like, almost like, bro, right. like, hold the fuck up. Like, what's well, to your point. Like, yeah, like, it's, it, well, like you said, is that they're also proving him right. Like, he's wild They are, now. because he was saying that, that he was basically saying that he can't do anything he wants. And it's true, but it's not because you can't do whatever you want. It's because you have to be careful today as an influencer, bro. A responsibility comes with the shit. That's why I've been watching what I say more. Because I know now, bro. Like, you say things yeah. like, I'm not willing to scoop low in battles anymore. I'm just letting you know. I'm not willing to do it. Word. I'm not. Because it's just, it's energy you just don't want back on you, bro. And like you said, as a master, it's not something that you necessarily need to do to be able to skillfully do it without having to take the low hanging fruit is a skill in itself. And that's, 100%. that's something to be proud and brag about too. 100%. So that's definitely, but yeah, I don't know what he just did, but he about it here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, nah, it's, it's crazy, bro. It's fucking. Yeah. You know, that's interesting though, man. First generation born in America, and you got an appreciation for just about every religion, every background, every walk of life. That's powerful. That's part of being a, a, American, right? To be real with you, like, I don't like saying this because it comes with a lot of connotations to it, uh -huh. but I like being like a global citizen. Yeah. Not a globalist, <laughs> but like a citizen of Earth, bro. I don't think... Yeah. I don't know how I feel. I'm changing in a lot of ways. I used to be like a nationalist type of person. Right. And I'm not anymore. And I don't even fucking believe in it. Like, I'm I'm kind of adopting that whole fucking... I do believe all cultures should be preserved. And we shouldn't, like, make it to where it's all one culture. Because that's what makes everyone so beautiful. But for me, personally, I don't belong to shit. I belong to everyone. <laughs> like, I'm Lebanese, but I feel like I belong to everyone, bro. I relate to that so heavy, and I'm going to tell you why. Um, a lot of people ask me, where are you from? Where are you from? Where are you from? I live yeah. in South Florida. People assume I'm Hispanic. Right. Right? So I'm going to tell you, my mom is Indian and Chinese. Wow. Meaning Indian, slanted eyes. I'm sorry, Indian dot on the forehead, Chinese, slanted eyes. Well, it's close. On one side, right? My father is German and Cuban, Cuban by way of Spain. That's crazy. So my grandmother is a short, fair-skinned, red-haired woman. My grandfather is a tall, bald, broad-shouldered Scottish German man. Yeah, there. My parents are both born and raised in Jamaica, so my cultural background is That's Jamaican amazing. food, flag, <laughs> culture, music. <laughs> right. So, growing up, 
people ask me where you from, it's not something that you're born knowing. Yeah. I had to go back and turn around and ask my mom, where are we from? She but said, that's well, so good that you like, dude, you would have never been created without this crazy mix. Like, that's I'm why it's very blessed. But so my perspective on things, you know, it's like uh, people talk about you go to prison. It's like, what, what camp would you oh, be yeah, in, yeah, big yeah, dog? Yeah, 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 exactly. Where would you be at? We're going to throw you with the Chicos just because your skin tone, which is funny. My skin tone is actually the Indian side of me. But because I am from where I'm from, I don't give a, I don't see color. I didn't see color till I started really paying attention to that shit and watching the news and understanding what the fuck was going on with politics and this, that, and the third. But my white friends were my, were not my white friends. They were my friends. Yeah. Yeah. But the Spanish guy, the black guy and down here, you got it all. The, the Polynesian kid, the Filipino, the Mexican, the, you guys Dominican. are pretty diverse out in Florida. Gotta, be, gotta admit, no, it's yeah. more diverse in California. You can't I grow up like. down here and be racist, man. You're tricking yourself. Yeah. Your best friend was a, a little white boy. And the other dude was a Chinese kid and a Japanese and a Korean. And it's we amazing all... to learn all that shit. Like I, like for me, like I, I'm telling you, there's not a culture. I don't like even like the ones that are demonized, whether it's Israel or China or, like Chinese like culture is fucking incredible but we're like we're being bombarded with the idea that China's trying to destroy us and that like and there is that the CCP is not the fun, the greatest <laughs> the, f- the most friends fun, uh, next yeah, door yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying but the people of China bro are incredible human beings bro like just everything about them every they just just Definitely. hang out with actual Chinese different people like from there that barely speak english but know enough they're educated to like talk to you and just hang out with them for a whole day and be around these guys like they're just <laughs> the discipline and they're 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 just their self like the the way they are and like i was talking to these like younger they were like 20 20 21 years old chinese kids bro like i was trying to get <laughs> a blunt like trying to light a blunt and i was looking for a lighter <laughs> and i ended up in this convo with these kids by their car bro they're telling me how they're like running their companies and they're setting up shit for their parents and all this shit and they're 21 <laughs> i'm like bro you're a 21 year old kid on? bro like what are you talking about like i'm t- this is what they're teaching these guys and he's he already knows how to shoot guns and he knows how to field strip an ak and all this fucking crazy shit and i'm like damn you're like you, when I was your age, bro, like I was just trying to get high and fuck bitches, bro. Fuck like that's what they were teaching us in America, bro. Like, uh, like America here, like our TikToks and all the shit that they show us, completely different from what they show them, bro. Like they're just, they're so intelligent and they speak fucking three languages each one of them, and it's I just like, bro, yeah. like they keep us away from understanding all this shit, bro. And like Absolutely. you meet people from different cultures and you realize the ones they demonize Russia to us, like all oh, Russians are, bro. Russians are like some of the most solid motherfuckers on earth. I yeah. went through it. They, they, they're just not friendly. They're just not that friendly, bro. Right, like, you know what I mean? People. But you got to understand them. Like, you can't just walk up to a Russian guy in the street in Russia and be like, hey, how are you, bro? Like, let's go hang out. You can't do that. You know what I mean? The dude's going to be like, what the fuck are you looking at? Yeah, <laughs> this guy is fuck you, so good at imitating. Fucking suka bliet, you fucking chesel. <laughs> <laughs> the direction, fuck you. You know, where am I going? <laughs> I, I'm trying to find something over here. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Word, <laughs> but it's like, bro, they're like intelligent as fuck. There's no fucking Russians you won't meet that don't know how to run shit with computers and fucking just completely organized as fuck when it comes to business. And it's just like each culture you get into, you see their different disciplines and yeah, strong, you know, suits. like Koreans, like their educational ability and like how they just just every single culture you get into, you find different things about them that make them just incredible at what they do. And it's always fascinating to me because I feel like this. I feel the aura coming off them from the shit that they learned and I want to absorb it. Like when I meet a Japanese person, it's like that. Like it's, it's always like that with certain cultures for me, man. And new ones, it's, it's like, what? And I don't get to see new ones all the time. So like, it's hard to catch me slipping. What you were saying, you gotta be from somewhere about like new ones. What's very intriguing is like, like you were mentioning Dubai and the future of Dubai. Yeah. What that's going to look like. Yeah. Like the first realm of the future. You know? Dubai is like ground zero for like the fucking future. Like basically Bro. everybody's going over there. Like it's what the earth is going to be like in the next 50 years. People, uh, people, the way they're functioning over there. And they're going to see it first. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's nuts. It's, Bro, it's, they, they've already passed us. We're in the slums. When you go over there, you realize we're in the slums. We live in the slums. The world has already moved on. China, Dubai, India, countries like that have moved on, bro. They yeah, moved we're, over we're in the fucking slums. I mean, weren't we always late to the party? Like, no, we were, like, we were the fucking superpower of the world is what we were. <laughs> we are absolutely nothing right. now. Like, I'm telling you. When but you, we're young, right? Bro, they built like fucking 10 New Yorks in China. They got 10 of them. 
They got like ten or eleven New Yorks. And uh, yeah, like the, the, the bro, the stuff that we start, <laughs> we, don't, we don't, the stuff that we're like implementing here now has already been a thing there. That's what I'm saying. So long ago, we're new. No, no, I mean we're young. I'm talking about now, like you know, like people talk about five G and you know what are the things that five G. That's 5G what they got do. going oh, on. Over God, you know like, what the five G is. See, yeah. You got all these conspiracy theorists out here who'll just be like, it's causing fucking um, <laughs> microchip explosion in my body said, and <laughs> cancer and five G COVID. COVID man, yeah. Yeah. like yeah. those people <laughs> fucked everything up. Five G was really to run this fucking crazy ass fucking network of microphones and fucking video cameras. They're going to be put all over the world. So basically, they're already starting it in China, it's right? Available. And there's no way. Yeah, it's a, it's a new yeah, surveillance Yeah, you can walk system. into a grocery store. And just and say it, shit. It just, yeah. Say shit. Ugh. Like, it's a new surveillance Ugh. system, right? And they're using it for Uber, too. Uber is going to be kind of the first app that goes along with this shit, right? You just walk outside, and you're like, Uber, da 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 and then the Uber pulls up. Yeah. Walk outside, and you say it, because there's so many mics. Like, this money that the, the, these projects that they're putting, they're going to put a mic on every corner in every city. So, like, China's already doing that. Little mics everywhere. Just just installing all these mics all over the fucking city, tiny little ones that are very Crazy sensitive and pick up every conversation, bro. With vo- voice recognition, the AI by itself will now be able to identify while it's outside who's around it immediately. Like, oh, this is, you know, show juice. Yeah, and that's why they're here. so yeah. big on, on <laughs> you know implementing mean? the AI now because the way AI is working, you would think that eventually they're like, okay, we're going too far with this, but they're not because they need to get to where they need to go to. Oh, you know no, ain't, ain't nobody gives a fuck. It's 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 gonna get to the point where like, you know, they're gonna get all the cars. Like, I know we're going deep into this right now, but we might as well get it out. <laughs> they're gonna get all the cars on on a fucking electric grid, bro, and they're gonna make it to where the car won't go anywhere anymore that you want that you want it that they don't want it to. Think, like uh, like if you want to go protest at a federal building, the car just won't take you there no more, and you'll never be able to get there, and you'll never have a way there. They're gonna separate you. They're, what's happening is the kings and the peasants is happening all over again, and they're gonna the separation this time is gonna be like five hundred years of dark ages all over again before somebody like probably. Like like brings the empire down with some weird way on the inside. It'll but be for Kanye, the next Kanye five, West. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> incarnated five hundred yeah, times yeah, with yeah, like right. a robot eye. But like, <laughs> it, like as of now, uh, it's it's pretty much splitting, and it, and it's gonna get to that Crazy. point where you cannot reach them, can't talk to them, can't shoot a bullet at them, can't fucking. They'll take everything from you that you could do anything to them with. And it's not, you're not going to have anyone to answer to. Eventually, you're going to be on your own out here. And that's what's going to happen to Earth. They're actually not going to be there anymore. Like, what I'm saying is like an office that's empty. Like, when you go to a a grocery store and it's self-checkout, everything in the future of this world is going to be that one day. You're just going to be alone in the world. Like, you go out into the world and everything you do is going to be by yourself. And you see it in certain it's places. Got, I, went to, I went to an airport. It's scary. It's scary. There's going to be no people. The thing is, once Ooh. they get it to this point, it's not going to matter because we're not going to be here and nobody is. Um, for them to get it to this point, they're going to have to wipe out half the population of the planet, which they will successfully at some point. But once they do that, they'll be able to control everybody and then everybody will have what they need and you'll be able to go out and go to a government building, get all your, talk to a robot, do all your shit. You'll never see a person again and you'll never talk to a person and authority it's there. ever in your life or you'll probably just see what they look like on TV and you'll never, <laughs> ever, ever have contact with them again and that's how governments will reach their ultimate status of governing and full fucking control. And it, it'll take it until you get to there to it'll plateau. Huh? It'll take it till it gets like to the finest detail of that before st- shit starts. If, yeah. If and and then when reverse. it gets there, it's going to go there for so long unbreak breaking probably for like hundreds of years. And then somebody probably will be born inside that empire that, ends up mutating and being like, my family is horrible and I'm going to bring it all down. (laughs) (laughs) And then then we'll have like some kind of another Roman empire falling in the future. You know what I'm saying? Whatever the future one's going to be, but it's coming. It's wild that we're in this world. It's it's a dystopian future. We got to see it turn into it though. We're going to be old as fuck while it's coming into play. We'll be in our like fifties and sixties. That's crazy. We'll be signing <laughs> Jesus out. Jesus Christ! Old as fuck is only fifties and sixties. Yeah. We're almost there, guys. Yeah, we it. are. Yeah, no, no, second, I don't want. I don't want body. that to be. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Life. yeah. Uh, it's going to be in our sixties, bro. Life. We're going to be in our sixties, and we're going to see it all happen. It's just going to be like everything. Like it's just going to be like a dystopian. Like you know, it's going to be crazy. Cops won't even be really cops. It'll be like abs- absolute AI and shit pulling up on you and scanning you and fucking you up and asking you questions and knowing the answers to them already. So what's battle rap going to be like in that time? 
There's going to be no more. Just right through. There's going to be it's AI battling, battling each other. Battle rap will be done for. <laughs> every think, every word will be used up. Everyone will be bored <laughs> from all the bars you could possibly come up with because I, we are working our way to the end of the fucking thread. If you think about it, I thought about that all throughout my life. We're working through. We're almost there. We're almost at the end of the thread because. We're using everything that could possibly be used, especially at a faster rate now. There's a thousand leagues, a thousand battles happening a week. Battle rap will last another fifteen years maximum, and that's a lot. That's giving it a lot. Wow. Battle rap will last, I think, realistically, ten more years. We're gonna clip that. I for don't the think so. Head. You know, I, 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 yeah. and, I, and I say that because <laughs> I, I legitimately, as a child, my biggest fear was music's gonna run out of patterns and words and ways, like samples. You know, like you can't possibly make that many beats, right? And yeah, eventually it's, has a, to end. it's a little different though. But because yeah, you have genres, that's infinite, dude. but 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 people, that you have genres. But people aren't yeah. falling in love necessarily with the lyrics alone. It's the feel. It's it's that it's the personality. Okay, the yeah. person behind it is who they're falling in love with usually, and it doesn't matter how many times it happens. We've seen Michael Jordan, and we've seen Kobe Bryant, we've seen LeBron James. You might be right. It's just going to keep going down until they find the next personality that they truly like, and they want to dominate. You know what I'm saying? You so, might be right. It, it it would depend. Battle rap could survive, but it's going to keep changing to the point where it'll eventually be. Some it won't cookie be what cutter you shit. fell in love with. No, it'll be some cookie cutter shit like in the future where like. The new generation kids of like weird fucking. But isn't punks. that already happening? These yeah. punks will come out of nowhere and be like, "We're doing emo raps. Like, who's better <laughs> at killing themselves? Yo, 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 yo!" <laughs> and that'll be like the bars, you know what I mean? And that might be the future of it. It's like I'm killing something, myself, something. feeling myself in the hot tub. He I'm, said, "Who's better the at killing yeah. themselves?" <laughs> I gave myself a back rub and threw my toaster in the bathtub. Hello. Like it'll just be shit like that. Like and he's, I hung he's my. Doing upside down when I was sitting there with my frown yeah. like and, and then like maybe that will be the way people battle with each other and who could be more depressed and sad like I don't oh, fucking shit. know that shit will evolve into some other shit bro it ain't I, gonna be what we're talking about forever. I get what you're saying though like move to the end of the thread it's like there's only so many letters in the alphabet right like, so many words like we're gonna have to like yeah. it, it, battle rap would have to move into like a different realm to where it's like all like super different vocabulary like to be honest with you the only place it could go is forward yeah. It can't keep fucking repeating the same like run up and shoot you, run up and shoot you. You can't like it has to get to the point where you're using words that you don't use in a conversation. Make it different. Somebody. I, I thought, That's what probably what would I don't happen. know who I was talking to or maybe I was watching something on uh, like a podcast or something. But they were talking about how corny it is that people still like watching the Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia and they, they get in front of each other almost just close enough so they can fight, but they don't fight, but they push and they shove. It's like. All right, every fight we gonna do this shit. Not yeah. every fight do you actually hate the guy and want to. So I don't. Like, I don't. I don't like that. By the way, in battle rap, when they do the fake beef shit, like I'm not uh, with that shit. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna shake my fucking opponent's weird. fucking hand and be like, "You're amazing," and then I'm gonna go kick their it's ass because you're nice though. Yeah, but I'm gonna. But I'm gonna whip their ass in the fucking <laughs> ring. Like it's that. I'm not about. It's, so but you nice. do so have do that work. one instance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where worse. where I know there was history involved and I know there's things happening. You said you walked in and you didn't want to do it, but part of you had to want to do it. Because I you mean, are you are a very, I mean I knew the possibility of it. Yeah, you're there. a polarizing figure, right? So you're somebody that you do I, I know for a fact, because this is me. I hate that like when somebody walks around like, huh. Nobody is ever going to lay hands on me. I am the hand layer. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I am the hand layer. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, bro. He's a fucking asshole because he actually, man, uh, he's such a liar, bro. I'll never believe him. I'm always going to come back and think of this. Like that look he gave me before I punched him. Like he just was like, dude. <laughs> like that he just his here. eyes were like, yes, yeah, set it off. Come on. Let's fuck this whole place up. I, I still remember <laughs> getting that tiny feeling that he was supportive of it. Like, they just that like that little fucking feeling of support. <laughs> but it. then when it happened, I became the fucking most evil dude, and I punched him out of nowhere and all this shit. Like, motherfucker, you literally... I think he's been waiting on that. His, he it, wanted it, bro. He loves yeah. fight. <laughs> like, he was so enveloped in fighting and it being, like, how he got his fucking shit. Like, he was used to that. To me, it was a foreign thing. He's the one that, like, sucked me into that. You know what I mean? Right. Pause, sign. He sucked me into that, like, where he was just like, 
like do it and like just the eye contact the bro <laughs> the way he was like he was giving me that like where he was looking at me with his like eye you like won't. You won't. like like he was like saying like do it bro like oh he was yeah like but like not even i didn't even i don't feel think like he was, was doing it in a sense yeah it was almost like set it off let's fuck this place up Diz. like no, i really I think, felt like he i think he's such a he's just so liar. used to i think he was so used to being the bully and he got mad it fucking happened to him and then he didn't come out looking like the man in that and 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 that's what he couldn't live down and he still wanted to fight and then we tried yeah. to we tried to set it up bro we had this boxing he he had this boxing company reach out to me that that from LA like a guy from LA to set it up and we both agreed we started training and then <laughs> oh, it shit. never happened they didn't pay us shit he knows that I don't know I, you know like we almost we almost took care of it a couple, and then we squashed it, and then he started it up again, and it's just like, bro. <laughs> He's like, like, I miss it. Yeah, I don't think anybody's yeah, ever going to be okay like, with getting like, punched in the face like that. Okay, though. I understand <laughs> that, like, but it's like, bro, first of all, first of all, it was 10 years ago, bro. I can't remember what getting punched <laughs> 10 years ago feels like, let alone right. four or five. Right. But I could like, remember getting punched 10 years ago. If I got into a ago. fight four years ago, <laughs> I'm not going to really remember much of how I got hit. Like, I'm going to know I got hit, but, like, the feeling is gone, bro. Like, that's nothing. I'm so, but I'm going to remember that motherfucker's face. Obviously. <laughs> but the feeling of anger is gone, bro. You can't still be mad. You shouldn't. <laughs> You're a loser if you are. What, bro? You think so? I got that stopped. Long? I think if somebody punched me, I'm gonna be. I'm not gonna like. Bro, I got stopped into an oblivion by a soccer team. How about you, Landon? Stopped by a soccer team, and I got over it after a month. You're okay right. with if somebody punches you ten years, you see him down the line, you like him. Like him is a stretch. Yeah, <laughs> like him is asking yeah. for a lot, but I'm, yeah. I'm not asking for the guy to like me. <laughs> nah, for sure, I feel you. But I do feel like. Why'd you get stomped out by a soccer team? Um, why did I get stomped out? What by position did you play? I'm a striker. Okay. Because you talk shit, that's why. <laughs> How is that playing soccer with you? You talk shit through running up and down? I'm yeah. usually a fucking good guy on the field, but when I get mad, it's really shitty. <laughs> <laughs> it's really shitty. I have a shitty fucking... Like, it's what fucked my ACL up. It's what got me kicked oh, out of games, shit. ruined tournaments. I'm... I'm a fucking idiot, bro. Balassi, man, like, he's one of my favorite players. He was one of the greatest fucking players ever, and he fucked up his whole career because of this shit. Uh, like I just I I always have a bad temper bro like it's just it comes sometimes usually I'm happy playing and I'm in a good mood and it's all amazing everybody loves me on the field they even my opponents love me like it's fucking awesome but then some days I wake up on the wrong side of the bed and a defender is just constantly trying to injure me and yeah. ref is not paying attention it always happens like that somebody will lock in on me and the ref won't have my back and then I just take matters into my own hand bro and I just end up Oh, bro, I've fucked some yeah. referees up. I spit on a referee. I went into referee's pockets in one of the tournaments, bro. Like, went in his pockets to pull all his money up. Like, because <laughs> That's fly. I went in his... I mean, like, I pocket-checked the referee and fucking just flopped his shit all over the floor and all that, bro. And then fucking got a red card because you know why I did that to him? Somebody paid him off, you thought? We had to pay him. Like, we, we, we pay the ref... Every work. single game because they, they come, they're official refs, so they come come down, they collect money from the whole team. You know what I mean? Everybody pays them a little bit. So, like, we had paid this guy to ref the shit, and he tried to throw the fucking game, like, halfway through because we couldn't get along. The teams, we were, we were like, arguing, and he kept on saying, if you guys don't fix it right now, I'm walking away. I'm walking away. I'm walking away. He kept saying that, and we kept on arguing a little bit, and we were about to solve it. And the ref tried to walk away, bro. And he's like, I'm done. The, the game's over. I'm like, no, it's not. I was like, give us our money back right now, then, you bitch-ass motherfucker. He's like, nope, the game's over. He tried to walk away. I'm like, give us our fucking money. Just went in his pockets and just, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hey, dog, they did not let me back to that league ever again, bro. It became the craziest shit ever. That's wild. Yeah, man. But I, you're I, a wild I, boy. I, That's I who kinda, you are. That's disaster. Look, there was somebody on that field that day that said, That's disaster. They, they, they do know yeah. who I am sometimes. But you know, no, what? I mean, like that. You could have been given the name then. Oh yeah, yeah, that too. No, but I get recognized for my bullshit too. Um, I'll be honest with you, man. Like the soccer shit, the temper shit for me, man. It really fucked up a lot of things in my life. Sounds and like you miss it, man. I I, I do, and I'm st I'm starting to learn, bro. Like I think I've been through a lot in the last year, and I lost a lot of people, man. My attitude has changed towards life. Period, man. Like I just. I don't even have it in me to talk shit about people like that no more just because I feel like 
I feel like life is short, man, and just negative shit and being angry and just, you know what I mean? It's not worth it, dog. You got to control your fucking... You Do gotta, you feel like that'll take away some, a little bit from your battle rap persona? No, because people love me when I'm happier more. Okay. I'm just way funnier when I'm happier. I'm more entertaining. But when I get <laughs> mad, you can see it in the battles. And like, yeah, you might enjoy some of the bars, but then you'll get, you're going to see me getting frustrated too because it's it's real. And a lot of my battles in my life I've came into with a very, very, very shitty attitude, bro. And it's affected my battles, bro. The battles that people of mine that people think I lost are all battles I had a shitty attitude with. Period. None of the battles where I was in a good mood and I was a fucking genuinely positive force did I ever lose in my fucking life. Even the Iron Solomon one. I was in the best fucking state of mind ever for that. You know what I mean? When I'm angry, bro, the battle sucks. Well, tell me about Pat Stay. Rest in peace, Pat Stay. R.I.P. Pat, man. That's my favorite battle rapper of all time. That is a person that, you know, I look to be like, you know what I mean? And that's, again, what I'm talking about coincides with what I'm saying right now. You know what I mean? Just learning how to just let go and just not take things as serious. And Pat was that guy, bro. He's one of the most genuine people ever. And that's my favorite battle rapper of all time. You know what I mean? That was my guy. That's who I always thought was better than me. I never thought anybody else was. Ever. And he felt the same way, too, which made the whole shit fucking crazy as fuck. Like, and he also has that incredible persona oh bro he's, and he's he's also someone that just could have a, irreplaceable. A, a great time while he's on stage it looks like he's just genuinely was just having a good time and he just you know he would always hit me up whenever i was having a bad time to remind me that like yeah you're just tripping have a good time <laughs> you know what i mean he was just always that guy and it's crazy my boy blackout was like that rest in peace too it's like god takes them them people all the time bro it's absolutely fucking insane bro it's it's a humbling experience anytime you lose somebody of that caliber yeah the guy that calls when he knows that you're down and nobody hits you up like yeah. that guy that's like constantly seeing like what it other turns you into see. that that's what's happened with me like it's even happened with my battles bro i'm like turning into pat like it's crazy like i just feel like he needs to be continued somehow what like, was if i like? don't fucking do it it's just gonna die out and his fucking memory and his fucking style and the way he approached shit it will die out what was he like in the, in the battles in the battles <laughs> he's just pat is just so entertaining that like when you're battling him you get lost in his shit like i remember when i was battling him i just was enjoying his bars <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> Like, he started making fun of me, and it's just, like, the funniest shit ever. He was talking about how I hold the gun side, it's hold the Febreze bottle sideways, and I spray it while I'm cleaning the room and shit. Like, <laughs> uh, such a funny guy, bro. Yeah, <laughs> he, he was definitely incredible. That is one and of the he guys. He had, like, a crazy thing about me beating my fucking wife up. Like, like he's just, like, he, his wife, ta he told his wife, make a mistake. And, and she, like, made, and he's like, no, make me a steak. Like, bitch, you made a mistake. Like, <laughs> like, like, bro, he's so That's funny. Fun, though, <laughs> dog. <laughs> like he would like do like he was like playing off like the Arabic like make me a steak and like no you make a mistake <laughs> like, he was playing off the fucking accent like he's so funny nah, he was incredible oh bro you know that's somebody I would have loved to have the opportunity to see him he would have been just he would have he would have had you cracking the fuck up here this whole entire time bro he's just the funniest dude ever I could be funny like that sometimes maybe if I'm happy once in a blue moon Pat was like that 24-7 24-7, you couldn't knock him out of that feeling. You couldn't. No matter what it was. Bro, you could be at a funeral. He'll fart and be like, hey, sucks for the guy, huh? <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, bro, like the funniest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody like, that he, just brings like, out. At, at, like the, at the most insane times, like where shit's about to get awkward as fuck. Like, yeah, he can make a person laugh. Those people are incredible, and they're not. That, that it's, it's a rarity to find people like that. Especially in this day and age where so many people are consumed with themselves so far. I love Pat. That it's just, it's just <laughs> wild. Yeah, that's, that's somebody that, uh, that was a huge loss for the battle. Hey, we're not going to get over it, bro. Like, I, I'm be real with you. I'm back outside battling because of him right now. And Hollow told me he feels the same way. And right. I feel like the Saurus feels the same way. And all kinds of people feel the same way. He just left a crazy force and presence behind, man. And... That shit, we're going to carry it on, man. We came together and threw a whole event for him in his memorial. Nobody in any sport has done that. 
we we honored our guy like that where he passed away we threw a whole event all battled in his name every single one of us like imagine if people did that in sports for like when a dude when they fall they play a whole fucking game for them and donate everything to the family like they don't do yeah. that shit nothing bro we donated a quarter million dollars to his family come on quarter milli we raised fire you it's know what i mean like kudos to y'all man yeah you know and like that's that's for his family and just you know his kid like that he left behind two kids really and like it's nuts man life is short you know what i mean you never know who's gonna be next so you gotta just kind of just cherish the shit and just spread good luck may hey, i'm happy that i've never had a fucking argument or a bad thing to say about him Cause it would suck if I would have to go online and see a tweet from like 2012 where I was like, Pat stays a fucking loser. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, for sure. It sucks. Like so we, we, it happens to us a lot of times people die on us and then we realize, fuck man, I was a fucking horrible yeah. person to that guy, bro. Like I fuck, damn. The last thing I told that dude was to go fuck himself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm so happy that didn't happen. And that's what I'm saying. You gotta, we gotta be positive. So like it doesn't happen to us. So we know it won't happen, that we're good with everybody. That means no matter what happens to nobody, you know you're good. You know what I mean? And that's What do you think your the legacy that you're going to leave behind is? when, Like if, if you were gone, you know, God forbid, if you're gone tomorrow, what do you think people are going to be saying about I you? I mean, honestly, bro, like for me, like I feel like the most important thing that I did, bro, like I helped a lot of people like – gain their confidence in this world and I helped people through a lot of hard times and I connected with cultures all over the world and I went and touched people all over the planet bro and like just put myself in their shoes felt their pain with them experienced their experiences with them learned their languages gave them a piece of what I do in there for them to keep with them you know what I mean and that's uh. that's really my legacy and the fact that I preserved the actual rhyme <laughs> like dog I didn't sell out bro <laughs> For sure. really? I didn't sell out, dog. I started this shit on some hip hop shit, and you battled, <laughs> and I'm still on some. And you battled shit. through Let's depression go. yourself, of course. And so you've, I'm sure that you know, have, having the type <laughs> of fan base that you do, I'm sure that a lot of people, you know, used you as like, you know, you could make it out. You know, it's crazy. I mean, my fans have helped each other a lot. Like, it's crazy. I've been there for so many thousands of people. And Pat was the same. We used to just be therapists for people. And we still, I still, uh, still do it. You know what I mean? Um, so people just reach out to you, DMs. and. You but then, like, when I be going through it, like, them same motherfuckers come back for me. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, come on, man. Yeah, you know dope. better, man. Come on. Like, my you. fans are some real motherfuckers, yeah. man. Like, some of them, like, no, too. Like, boom, they'll hit me and they'll know I'm going through it. Like, a very select few and just be like, I know what's happening. Like, da 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 da. And, like, they'll say the key word to get me right back on track. And it's a fucking priceless feeling, bro. That, that I get yeah. from my fans. It's crazy. You That's know? dope to have that type of a connection with the fan base. Yeah, it is, bro. So, you're going to be the guy doing the emo. Raps, then that's what's gonna happen. Emo nah, but you know what? I am a bit too excessive, <laughs> but you know what? It's part of what makes my shit. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I th I, I, I meant accessible. Sorry, no, accessible. I mean, <laughs> I'm a no. bit accessible, but yeah. I, the the reason I love the art that you make is due to the emotion behind you, due to the fact that you could you could tell you stay connected with the people around. Like you, you are connecting with the crowd. You know what I mean? You're connecting with. You're, you're everybody's involved when you're battling yeah. like it's it's always the entire room is involved and if somebody says something to you you can look, you can look at somebody directly in the crowd and address them and then get back to what you're doing yeah you know like you're whether it's bad or good you're in you're in the i zone. like doing you're, that you're totally connected with everything yeah and i see again like I, I could feel that that's some people look at it as a bad thing though like hollow was telling uh, me he feels like i get distracted like, you know what I mean? But, like, I feel disaster like... Disaster wouldn't be disaster if you didn't get distracted. I do. I do get distracted, but I also don't when I don't want to be. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> so I like, allow myself to get distracted. So as far as, like, as far as musicians are involved, what what type of music do you listen to? I'm going to be real with you, man. I'll, I listen to music from all over the world. I listen to different shit. I don't listen to rap shit. Like, I do yeah. a little bit, but, like... Nah, bro, like, I just, like, my fucking, my playlist is full of crazy shit, like, Brazilian music, like, some of African the best music. best vibes ever. Yeah, Brazilian, <laughs> Nigerian music. Um, Brazilian Fire. jazz, I'm a piano, all that stuff. Brazilian, Nigerian. You gotta make a playlist Lebanese, and, like, Lebanese music. Let it out. 
I, I'll listen to a bunch of random shit, even Japanese and Chinese shit. Like, I listen to mad random stuff. But, like, right now, like, mainly, like, Brazilian and Nigerian. So. Yeah. Now I got to tune into it's it. Big right now. That's, <laughs> that's not, uh, yeah. Nigerian's my favorite. I got to write a it's note huge. to myself. Anything from Nigeria at this point to me is, like, the, the most fire. Dope. Even Ghana, too. Shouts out to Accra. Got to give them a shout out. I definitely got uh, to make a note Black stars, to man. They, they definitely got that shit popping out there, too, now. They're actually the next wave. In the dance hall thing, for sure. But yeah, I don't listen to fucking rap shit. <laughs> what do you think yeah. about these these complimentary rap battles that they have? Well, I think Pat was the, really the, the originator of it, so I don't really like watching it unless it's Pat. Pat okay. is the best compliment battler <laughs> on earth. Everybody else kind of just sounds like they're just trying too hard. Roan is really good, though, too. He Pat is really Roan. fucking good. Pat and Roan, I mean, they're... they're, they're Man, I, I, I can't, like, say enough how... If you know Pat Stay is is one of the staples. Um, Murder Mook for me, Loaded Lux, yeah, of course. Halo, um, of course. DNA, of course. Charlie Clips, yes. You know, like th- these are these are battles that it, it, I'm. It's like I'm watching a fu- fucking Netflix it's series. It's all very special people. Yeah, like I'm. It's like I'm watching a fucking Netflix series. Literally, like I, I could sit there and just, whoa. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, what are they going to say next? All of us have been around for a very long time. Because usually, for the most part, your te- a, a, a average person's attention span is like, I need a three minute track, and then I got to listen to the next thing. Or yeah. two, you know what I mean? Yeah. For a battle rap, you actually have to devote some time into it if you're going to watch it and actually pay attention to what that person's saying. And then, more than likely, you're going to have to hit the rewind button a bunch of times because you, you, something went over your head. You're one of those people that could put, you say something, and it's like, no, no, you didn't. He, there's no way he. <laughs> then you play it back and you're like, he really just, that whole shit was wordplay. It, he, yeah. It, you know, it drives you crazy and then you got to like tell somebody. So, like, the attention span for somebody to be able to watch a battle rap, I imagine that, like, that's a, that, that's something that could really make the big money because yeah. of the, the amount of time that it consumes you. Yeah. The, I mean, the, the consumer, you know? Yeah, it's the, the the we get paid off the attention span. By the way, like the way the YouTubes work, like it's they actually like pay you by how long the listener is fucking the retention. It's crazy. The retention yeah. is really important, bro. If somebody just watches your video, just like five minutes of it, your ads won't be the same. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so like we have retention power in battle rap. Motherfuckers lock in you from the to. beginning of the video till the end. You know what I mean? A lot of videos online don't get watched in full. Even the fans yeah, that are watching the Danza point. Project that see the battle rappers up here, the retention is very high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Battle rap definitely, we're good on that. We're definitely good. We've always been good on that. Like our fans just kind of just love everything about what we do. If they're t- tuning in, they're tuning in, not half-assing and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, they want to see this thing through. What's yeah, what is your main priority right now? Like, what do you do? Because because you do are you are working with the battle rap league, which is called what again? GTX. I mean, GTX. my priority is my, is the company is pushing that shit more and in and. Do you feel like you battlers. have to jump into a bunch of battles to make sure that a little bit? I'm just trying to help, but I'm trying to get everybody else up there and then do my crooked eye shit. Like so, basically. That's that's what I want to do. Just battle crooked eye, get this GTX shit more off the ground, and then get my fucking leg and figure out what I'm gonna do with my fucking ACL being torn. So I really, I really need Crook to do better than his for, former. He's going to. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's, he's nah, crooked, crooked is fire. I, I, I used to insane, listen bro. to Crooked from. from I've heard him rap a cappella before. He's really fucking good. Bro. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have did this battle if I didn't believe that. Like, I don't do battles where I feel like I'm gonna win. You know what I mean, I do battles that I feel like are a challenge. He's absolutely ridiculous. I feel like he's going to do what I thought cannabis was going to do. That's how I'm looking at it. Uh, yeah, cro- crooked eye is definitely so. I, just the way he puts together syllables and do his you have flow. a date for when that's going? No, on? but like I just need to. It's it's about well, I'm about to find out right now because just there's that. I just need to know. Twenty three. It should it should happen by the end of the year. I just need to know what I'm going to do with my leg. To be real with you, I'm for sure not doing a surgery as of now. And I have to go see what's up with stem cell research and all that. If I could just get my shit back like somewhat normal, I'm just going to f- carry out this whole fucking year this way. Yeah. We'll see, man. I just... It's a recent injury? In November, bro. It's... it's, From it's soccer? Yeah, bro. That's five wow. months now. Fuck. It's fucking yeah. crazy, bro. Yeah, I told you how I feel about pain, man. Like in- injuries are... Oh, shit ruined my li- this shit ruined my life, dog. Oh, I don't want to even get into it right now. Hopefully. Absolutely. You lost a lot of weight. Dog. I lost all my muscle, man. 
feel like a fucking. <laughs> I feel like a fucking chill, gimp. Chill out. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, if you watch the guy's battles, he's yeah, he's bro, hovering. I, I like, was yeah. ripped, bro. Like I'm not. I do not look this skinny. I lost thirty pounds. But do you you don't feel better in that in the, in, the, no. in your body that way? No, because uh, he's saying he's lost muscle, man. That's bro, my that's legs different. my legs were like fucking Terminator. Like I'd kick a hole in your fucking wall. <laughs> Like I don't feel that way right now. <laughs> do you do you feel different when you're in a battle because of that? Because you you yeah. Were. I never really felt like I I felt like I have to be careful. I didn't fucking hurt somebody by accident. Yeah, like just <laughs> moving around too fast. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, bro. It's just uh, I don't know. It's hard for me to be honest with you. These last couple battles I've done, I definitely feel like half of a person in them. Yeah, that's that's, that's what I, I would I would imagine. But I'm pu- I'm punching through it. I'm just using my brain power. I just cut off the physical aspect. You know, I, I watch the challenge. It is. It, it is. It, I feel like it's, it's a good me. challenge. One of my favorite rappers, one of the most underappreciated artists, is Busta Rhymes. Oh, that was one of my first yeah. guys too. That I, didn't I feel like you Onyx are. I feel DMX. like you are damn near like the Busta Rhymes of battle rap when it comes to the animation. Your animation is incredible, bro. That is one of my fu- er, early, early influences. You know, man. He, um, um, extinction level event. Yeah, yeah. I had that. And disaster strikes. <laughs> <laughs> nah, uh, Buster Rhymes is somebody that his his animation in the music is something that I, I feel like so... I don't know. I feel like it's hard to not connect to that type of energy. And that's what's going on, I feel like, when you because your fans fucking love you, bro. They fucking love you. I love my friends. You know what I'm saying? So it's the Give Me Some Mo Shit by fucking Buster Rhymes was the first song I ever me memorized me the words for. It's the first song I ever transcribed the words and memorized them for. I had to know what he was saying. I couldn't. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I couldn't. I had Who to whistled? know. whistled? Me. He did. Yeah, that always creeps it me was, the fuck out. It was on point, By too. the way, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that melody was crazy. Yeah, I got to hear it now. What do you rap like? What do I rap? <laughs> no, like no. I, what what I'm saying is on a beat. How, how if, you, you, if you if you're saying like, do you rap with the same energy of Busta Rhymes when you're on a beat? Is that um, it depends. I there? mean, for me, like for me, like it just depends what the beat is. If a beat is has enough, like it's weird. Like if the tempo, if there's enough space in it to play around, yeah, I could do that. Like it just depends. It just depends on the amount of space. It's just I I just. I I definitely like boom bap and older shit that Busta Rhymes would like more than this new shit. I don't like rapping to this new shit. It just sounds weird to me, bro. It just doesn't sound like just the drum patterns. I just, I'm not feeling them. I'm just more of like an old school dude, you know what I mean, when it comes to that shit, you know. But Busta was definitely one of my biggest influences. I, I failed to mention him with DMX and Onyx all the time. But when I look back on when I was a kid, it's weird that I do that because he was right there. Right. Through all of it, like I just, I remember just being blown away by everything Busta did. Like he was my, he was literally one of my favorites. You know what I mean? And I liked Pac too. I liked Mace. Ah, I love Mace. A lot of people I like, loved Mace. A lot of people like Mace. Dog, Mace was the <laughs> shit to me when he came out with Harlem World. Yeah, Harlem I World hope. was the shit, bro. Like I, that's one of I my know albums. Where you reside, right there on the east side. The shit, you know, is fire, oh bro. God, and and uh, money, power, respect. From the locks and Puffy No Way Out and Harlem World from Mace were another three records that were from the East Coast that I got my hands on when I was a fucking kid and they <laughs> fucked my childhood up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, like, Mace, man. yeah, like the No Way Out was crazy. I almost want to listen to that. All this shit. Don't be worried about the cars, the clothes, the money of these old. You no know, blood is sticking in all this shit. So, West Coast, man, that 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 guy has gotten me through Nip. so much. Uh, when I caught R. a case R. back in 2010, R. I, R. I, I, I got stuck on Nipsey Hussle probably a couple years before that, but I got stuck on him when I caught a case. Yeah. And I just listened to his music. Just everything was, everything I listened to about his music was telling me, like, it's a long race. That was our real you know Tupac, to be honest Merit with you. Continues. LA got fucked up over Nipsey more than Pac. Absolutely. Way more. Like when right. Pac passed away, obviously it was huge. I was I was a kid anyway, so I can't tell you I remember what it was like. But dog, when Nipsey passed away, LA got turned upside down on its head. Everybody could feel it. Dog, there was like sixty thousand people walking in the street. It was fucking insane. And the wildest part Never is seen nothing like it, it was just 
for his superstardom, it was just beginning. Like, yeah. Oh, he, it was still early, but the whole city loved him. They knew who he was. That guy was an official right. dude. He's an official dude. Once you once you like do it the right way, that's why like I I don't respect like street rap shit. Like, because it's all this fucking weird shit, like, where a dude is telling you his story. Like, why am I listening to your story from you? You know what I mean? Like, Nipsey, bro, a thousand people will tell you his story in the city. That's why he was uh. Nipsey. Because everybody knows his shit. He doesn't have to go around telling you, like, what's up with all these rappers that we have to fucking hear their story? It's like, you, oh, you're a gangster from the street. Tell us about what you did. Oh, you're dirt. Oh, you did this. It's like, dog... Nipsey just everything that he's done his whole life, everybody knows what it is. Real as they come, all his bro. stripes are real as fuck. Like I used to hear stories about him, like he fought Big U for his masters and all this shit. Like, <laughs> so like just insane <laughs> shit. Like who the fuck even does shit like that? Like you just hear crazy stories about about Nip. Like all was around the city and just how he was a real dude. How he like helped out people. He would take care of people. He put money in people's pockets. Like. He just had a crazy reputation, bro. You didn't need to be big in the music industry. You know what I mean? Absolutely. He was a real one in, in, in the community. Like, oh, yeah. and that's another thing is he actually did community work. You know, mm. he was, he was going to, he was, he was literally getting paid that week to fucking do a bunch of shit. Yeah. Like, uh, that's what he was doing. 33 years old. It's crazy. Nah, listen, man. It's crazy, man. Nip was so influential. I, I was devastated when. Cardi B beat him for album of the year. Oh, you um, know how the fucking you know how the industry I was works. just devastated because I'm like, this is such a big uh, moment. A and then they check. had and, and they had that like um it's just a payment. They had that that <sighs> that preview where they showed him playing his album for the Grammys and whatnot. Like and then he had that that big slap. Oh when he slapped it. Was it was oh it BT? God, was he it? Slapped he the fuck. That was such a good slap. <laughs> No, it was so fly. good. Shirt Actually, you know what? That was probably out. the only slap that's comparable to Will Smith's slap. No, nah, but he that slapped. That was such a good slap. He didn't <laughs> slap somebody, though. Huh? Who'd he slap, though? He slapped oh, security that, guard. That, that slap was incredible. I'm just yeah, talking it was. about it the... It was. Like, okay. that was like... It looked like a, a Wild West draw. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, he slapped oh, that boy good. good. He slapped oh, yeah, that, good. Yeah, that was good. a slap heard around the world. It really was. Yeah. was <laughs> all that LA was that, talking that's about. That's where it started. <laughs> yeah, you see Cuz get slapped up. Everybody was talking about that <laughs> that's shit. That's where it fucking started, bro. I'm telling you, that's where it started. But what I want to do is I don't know what we do. We could take a little we could take a little intermission and smoke break and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, let's but, take a little smoke okay, break. Okay, so let's 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 cut these people off for a minute. We're gonna go on a quick smoke break, but when I come back, I want to listen to some fucking beats. Oh, all right, let's get all it. All right. So, so for everybody that's watching, make sure you're hitting that like like button. You're sharing it. We're gonna come back. We got bars for you. All right. So, chill out for a minute. Everything we do is live. None of this shit is edited. So we are right here, live in the flesh. You're watching us. We're gonna put you on a brief intermission. Chill Hello. for a second, and we'll be back. <laughs> Tony boy hit me. He said I need to spend all this money yeah, on all this shit, I like, and damn. I'm just gonna do some garbage ass shit. Hell no. Nah. Do, 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 do. This shit's got to sound epic. Like, it's got to sound like we're making movies and shit. Like, that. Are we That's live? Like, we are live. Um, we're uh, not necessarily just rapping right this second. We got to wait for Chris to walk back in wherever the hell he went. You know, I'm a freestyle, though, man. I know a lot of people like to spit, like, rounds that they got. I'm going actually... to just let the other beat play that we were listening to. Go off the top. And then when the, and then when the other one comes on. I'm gonna I'm I'm do like a uh, the interlude, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank all of you for watching the Danza Project tonight. We brought you, brought you another excellent episode. Welcome. Yeah. The year is 2023. The lights are still bright. Damn it, Landon. Just waiting for you to dim them. Hey, hey, hey. I'm getting high faded. No, I know I'm so intoxicated. I'm obligated. Gotta do this for my people. Gotta say I made it. Gotta make it to the top. Ain't no fucking vacant places. Hey, I found an oasis. Found water for me to stage my own matrix. Hey, this shit is hard. <laughs> shit, we freestyle this one. Hey, you just you're just having fun. We could get. High we just get warmed sky, up, goddammit. 
floating now Said I'm hoping now, open style Getting fucking faded with the okie doke Smoking on the big ass smoke You got the ganja smoke, big doja I'm a soldier, I light it up in the spark from it Look like supernovas when the cherry Turn that mic up a little bit, Landon I need you to be an engineer You catch me smoking weed I don't post at no bars I don't get drunk I get faded as fuck I be posted up rolling big grabber blunts Bitch, I smoke the Fanto leaf nah, If nah, it's not up, Fanto, I don't put cheat his, put his, put his yeah, you know what it is Put my mic up Slice up, I put my knife up Get your whole fucking face and eye cut Off the side Put that side mic up like a little you. bit more, my guy <laughs> Yeah, yeah we was always on the We was on the thing We were sitting on I was getting high like a motherfucker Yeah I was getting high like a uh, Yeah Hey Hey, all types of flavors, smoking with my neighbors, smoking, I get money, I get major, until the day we say we made it, I was pushing birds since the pages, and everybody acting like they made us, but you ain't never made shit, we made ourselves in this game, I don't take shit. This is the makeshift, now watch me eat, eat straight, shape shift and change up my position like an alien spaceship, I made it to this vision, I am... I am posted at the top of the mountain view, counting you out, looking down on you. I seen these cats acting like they was a crown. Catch a pound or two, lay them all down. I am comfortable he said he lounging was different. with it. Uh, lounging at the top, yeah, lounging at the top, yeah. Watch, 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 watch. It's so sick with it, no, I'm so liquid, liquid it. I fiddle with your bitches, clitoris. Twist the motherfucking pussy up, twist the clit like it was licorice. Yeah, you don't want me to spit with this, and I don't smoke. No cigarettes, cause I think cancer sticks Nicotine is all so ridiculous I got that big vape, I'm smoking on my THC Getting high like a motherfucker Ain't no CBD, bitch What you thought this was? Man, I'm looking for a buzz If you thinking that this what it is This is what it was what? What? <laughs> And high with homies like blood or they cuss No matter where they from Cause we all the same getting high in this game I'm doing some of the thing Hey, watch we me light it up yeah, with God the smoke it, We just getting warmed up uh, Get warmed up Fire Got bitches getting fucked all over Pornhub Pussy yeah. getting torn up You ready for the war or what? Bitch, you running out of getting luck This poor up. luck, bitch You fuck around Watch me catch him in the Ford truck Busting shots, pull the far up Hey, in the foreign They be acting like they fucking with the Lauren, big Ralph Lauren, you don't know what I got a store and I'm bringing war to you bitches. I'm in the forest, I'm bringing so much to you, cat. You nothing but Taurus in this game, in this game. Brontosaurus in this game, rip your fucking head off a Tyrannosaurus off your frame. It's an arc survival, bitch. I don't give a fuck about my rivals. I'm loaded up with 30 out rifles, bitch. And you just sitting on a yacht with a sniper, fuck around and snipe you down because I'm hyper sniper mode, snapping spinal cords like sniper. Styrofoam, fuck around with disaster. I'll take your microphone. Uh, your mic go home, might be so psycho like Michael Myers. Got a psycho dome. I am plus, I am worldwide known. I ain't not a fucking local guy. I am global. You can go and try, bitch. You will fuck eat homicide, bitch. You wanna die, bitch. You wanna cry. You don't wanna play. This is one of our. Get an alibi. Sing his ass a lullaby. Put his ass to sleep. Catch his fucking homie. Say his ass goodbye. Bye bye. You know the giant. Da, da, you know you're not da. This is like the armada. I run up on you, bitches. I'm the da da. You could get fucked in the face, get shot like I'm blind. Da, 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 da. Do make your bitch do the cucaracha. You fuck around with me, it's da da da. Hey, hey, what am I saying? What am I saying? I gotta change it up if I'm playing. Uh, I gotta change it up. Ain't no delaying. Ain't no playing with the alien. And hey, yo, I'm saying this is saline. MCs wanna play fiend. Wanna play with me, you know I got the game Smoking on them gray leaves, smoking on that high Some motherfucker dusted, spontaneously combusted Bitch, I never trusted any one of you You better not get too comfortable Get ate up just like a Lunchable Watch how quick I'm bum rushing you I got a Russian few homies that can catch you up And get you caught up with a few Bitch, a couple or two Hey, it's too much, I bet the trouble you were rumbling Seen him on the block, but my stomach was crumbling Mumbling, I mean my stomach was fucking Rumbling. I was hungry when I seen him eating and I had nothing then. Now I'm picking it back up. You know I pick the slack up. MCs get smacked up the 
bullets come out the barrel, tear the glass up. Your uh. car fall the fuck apart. Bitches getting caught up, bitches. Hey, hey, yo, you know how I was brought up. Bitches get shot up. You know there ain't no motherfucking consciousness. Hey, they talking. It's so provocative. The, these people acting argumentative. They trying to get the fucking crazy with me. Know what, what, what I said this shit. Hey, hey. It's not meant to make sense anymore. Yeah. Hey, yo, it's not meant to make sense anymore. What the fuck am I even making no sense for? You need to give me a fucking word, man. I'm running out of words there. Hey. Here's a project is the word. Guy. Uh, 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 the B was on, on its way out. The B was on its way out. AJK. The word of the day is the Danza Project. Just so you motherfuckers know, yo, this is live in the flesh. Just so you know, I'm literally clicking. I went to YouTube. I picked Nick Nipsey Hustle what beats, type beat. What was that other beat? You were playing a crazy beat. It's yeah. a Nipsey Hustle type beat. That's why I just typed in Nipsey yeah. Hustle type you beat. Like that. The you like one? that. This nah, nah, there was another one you played. Wait, was it this one? Nah, it wasn't. Nah, this the one. one. Nah, I only played two. And what we, was the other one you played? Two. Yeah, what was that other one? The first one? Yeah. Oh, it's fire. Yeah. This one hot too, but it's a little slow. Yeah, different tempo, different tempo. But, that, but it was good for the interlude. I'm a said I'm getting this, this, this one right here. Yeah, but we, we're not even going to use the same one twice. All right. We don't need this? to do that. This is Dancing Project, baby. You know what I'm saying? If you're watching right now, how you doing? Damn. <laughs> Ladies, make sure you're tapping that like button because I like you. You know what it do, baby boo. Some of that water. If you're you know, watching me tonight, get some of that water. That, that water was yours. All you gotta do is drink it and just let the lyrics pour. That water is yours. All you gotta do is drink it. This and is just a little let the different. Pour. Let the lyrics pour. Let the let the lyrics pour. Let the lyrics pour. Let the let the lyrics pour. Let's go. Uh, song three. I was just let high the again. Pour. I was getting high again. Hey, I was on one. Yeah. Uh. Seeing my life in the mirror shine by, yeah, uh, seeing passing me by, every single day's the same, I sit there getting high, and wonder why I didn't change things up a bit, Hey yo, cause I'm always on the game, fucking up some shit, trying to get my act together so I can raise up this company and everybody run with me, no, this is for love, this is for the love, this is for the rapping shit, this is how it happened, ain't no procrastinating, I got this game on lock, there ain't no shit that ain't gonna stop me, if you you know it's just and I hit that shit like kamikazes. I'm a uh uh. This shit is a little hard to rap yeah, to yeah, for yeah, me. It's yeah. a little too hard. Sure? I was just, like get me I'm rapping. It's like you know. R and B shit yeah. right now. But I can flip it. Yeah, like yeah. it's just gotta be that, like smooth. That's, that's, like that's the extra. interlude to what we're doing. We're just vibing, goddamn. You trying to you trying to challenge it's me exercise. with this? Yeah. That's Why not? Right, I'll I'll flip my style if you nah, want me. Now nah, you tell me. We'll listen to him, and if I you just, tell me to flip past it, I'll flip past. It's hard to bar out on shit like that. That's true. You was playing a hard ass beat out there, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was it. You I forgot it. No, no, I wasn't. I had it. I did it. He was playing a different one. It was a few songs no, back. It was this one. I only played two. I got my history on. Come on, I can see. This was it. Let's see. It was this one, and then I played this if one. If it's out. real, he'll feel it. Yeah. Did we? We didn't just rap to this we just one. Just rap to this. Yeah. Oh, we did. Yeah, we did. Uh, nah, but it was. Man, I'm, I'm telling, telling you, it was it. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, but I know more up tempo, more faster than this. Nah, I know what he likes. I'm just listening to him. Like I, I said, just like more boom this, bappy shit. None of this shit you know is rehearsed. Mean? You know what I'm gonna do? The dude you like, both of those beats were his. I'm gonna listen, I'm gonna go to his beats. Yeah. As long as it's not too new, like the drums, like the drums got to be a little boom bappy. I don't think he does that. You see the names of his, his beats? He doesn't do that. Uh. The beat is so so. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's all about how this beat drops. I was, I was sitting up. I was, I was twisting up. Uh, I was sitting there, still not giving a fuck. Still not drinking in my cup. I was faded. Yeah. Intoxicated is the motive. Know that my flow is highly explosive, highly ferocious. I give you high doses of this flow. I'm like Moses. I am a mitosis. Give you a diagnosis, then I can change up. These cats can't fuck with me. They quick get their face cut like paper cuts on the fucking side of their fingers. Twitter fingers. MCs get fucking rendered senseless. MCs is sent into different dimensions. I extend 
my hand I don't think these fucking cats understand I gave an olive branch I gave it out from the side And they just held a solid stance And they didn't oblige I think it's It's on me to take heed now and this is all from a freestyle Meanwhile, these people all be writing they bars And they can come up with things They put them right with the stars I put Ignite, I'm in charge I ignite with the sparks Breaking them seeds the fuck down I be traveling like SARS And going through different, different areas Hey, you need to take a vaccine for me Just like malaria I carry you into an area And bury you inside a cemetery Yes, I carry you with pallbearers That will bury you next You play around and see You better to read all the criteria text I'm an encyclopedia I don't fuck with the media I snipe MCs and leave them sleeping I'm leukemia I am all different type of diseases I release this into your fucking brain I watch how quick you decease Quick fuck with no polices Oh release this I think you understand that the flow is like a thesis Or maybe you can use it as some type of different philosophy This how it got to be These cats can't fuck with the policy You box with me I knock a fucking eye out MCs wanna fuck around with me now watch how quick i come and fly out to miami so i can get this motherfucking radio show i better get a podcast you didn't know the big dance yeah. a project i leave mc stomped regardless if i'm feeling like i'm fucking nauseous sometimes i smoke weed until i feel like i want to fucking vomit and see him only couple of years just like a comet come back around and drop a comment on the top of the comment box mc's is intoxicated it's toxic watch i got too much for you cats now watch how quick i rob your watch you better Rob, I watch. I fuck around and stop. Jesus. <laughs> I don't know if you want to keep going, but you're killing it. Yeah, no, nah, I'll keep going. <laughs> yeah, because this shit is this shit is some phenomenal fucking content. Hey, look. <laughs> At the end of the day, I try to tell people real Come quick. On. I try to tell people at the Danza Project, the thing that I'm actually doing, it ain't about the money. And when the money comes, it's going to be a beautiful thing, but it ain't about the money. I just genuinely like having conversations with dope motherfuckers. And I got a dope motherfucker in the room right now. You know what I'm hey, saying? what we doing here? Hey, raise this up. Hey, hey, raise this up. Come on, let me get this shit louder. Uh, Put his uh, up. Uh, from the bottom of the motherfucking private. Hey, hey. <laughs> Okay, I think this is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the bottom of the frying pan. No, I was down from the beginning. Hey, yo, these people ain't understand the world we winning. The world we in like a whirlwind. And every girlfriend is just a fucking time that we spinning. The end of this shit is coming soon. These people ain't paying attention to what's happening. The big kaboom, a big sonic boom, atomic fumes consuming us. This fucking world that we live in is so ludicrous. I, maybe I can touch someone. Maybe I can reach out. Maybe I can speak to these people. Maybe I teach now. Maybe I can, maybe I can get to you. Just based off a of principle, we not invincible. We need to start working so we can start merging into a different destination. No hesitation, I start murking. MC's getting dusted. Play around with me, you already know. Hey, you ready know. Hey, get high every single day, things don't change. All these people playing with me. Yeah, I feel that pain. It's deep in my veins, and I'm feeling like I gotta fucking sit and break free. Hey, I be freestyling hey. and shit, they be coming straight from my mind. In the tingles, I can feel. Traveling up my spine I know it's my time But I got a straight hold back Roll back I know that you ready Wanna throw back And take a picture Like it was a Kodak MCs wanna fuck with me The picture is black Just like Kodak I don't, I don't think you understand me Hey, these people walking around I do this for my family huh. Yeah And it's demanding me To understand that I had a strategy From the beginning Held it down like gravity It's for the people Getting mad at me Because I can't answer No phone calls lately Hey, life is getting shady, life is getting crazy Feel like I'm lost lately But I'm still traveling on this road I'm still walking down a fork in the road I'm passing by these people acting like they don't even know Haven't seen it before, haven't seen my pain Haven't seen what I've been through, I don't need no chain I just need the results of my work to be felt Yeah, and keep it all beneath the belt, man, Orion style Orion, cause you know the flow fine So defiant, these cats, they ain't got no iron This shit is getting low so depleted MCs wanna step to disaster They quickly getting defeated I ain't conceited I be humble all the times But sometimes I see MCs crumble from the lines Don't fumble from the line Better get the bag now MCs like me would never ever back down 
gon' bring that fucking rap back Cause I'm about to rap now And yo, had a bitch sitting in a black gown Post it up, pass down, right up, up hey. Los Angeles and back down Hey, hey, I'm Florida I'm Florida Woo. What's this? It's a new one yeah, yeah, Wait, yeah, I feel yeah. like Damn, I almost did a remix to this before I almost did a remix Oh my before. god, this beat is so so for god damn it, I love Yeah, it. never uh, even uh, uh. Let me get my headphones up too, god damn it I'm number two, I'm number two Yep, yep, yep That's me right there, god damn it uh, you, trying to rap? you know what, let this motherfucker get his headphone volume up too, god damn it God damn it, Landon Go, go I don't even want to rap, but I will uh, Look, I don't even want to rap, but I will if I have to. I'm just freestyling live on the Danza Project with disaster. Uh, How could I pass that up? I'm trying to get high, nigga, pass that blunt. Uh -huh. It's been I, so long since I smoked, but now I'm fucking smoking. Oh shit, I feel I deserve a fucking token. Let me get up to the next level. Let me meet the next devil. And let me get the next shovel. I want to bury him. Me, I'm never scary of these motherfuckers out there trying to carry a little bit of weight. Little bored, little more than me. I don't give a fuck. I just just really, really born to me. Yeah. I'm really fucking doing this all off the top. Yes. I don't give a motherfuck. I just do it on the spot. How the fuck could a co-host do this? He shouldn't be doing it. He shouldn't be rapping. He shouldn't be doing all this shit that they lacking. I freestyle off the duck top, never lacking, never in the motherfucking Cadillac. I'm just fucking blacking. Put me in the AMG. Show you what'll happen. Speeding down the lane, real fast. <laughs> I'm done, motherfucker. Uh, 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 you gonna get hit it too? Come on. Nah, I can't rap. Though. Hey, hey, I can't rap. hey, hey. That's how we do it, big dog. You gotta do it in the booth. Uh -huh. And every time you rap, you better tell them all the truth. Yeah. Better tell them how you feel. Cause time is short now. This life here, man, we need to fucking hold it down. Hold it down. I roll the pound. You wanna roll around? I'm in your local town. I'm holding down because I'm global now. Global how they ask me. Cause I travel around the world. Travel around the world while I'm smacking up your girl. Huh. And I don't gotta buy her no pearls or no diamond rings. Them diamond things. These materialistic things is obstacles. And fuck around with me. You know this mission is impossible MCs mess with disaster End up in hospitals Your tonsils pulled from the back of your throat You fuck around and get smacked with the dope With the bag of the dope yeah. Fuck around <laughs> yeah. Oh my yeah. god hey, the the We gotta do you. that Hey, we gotta hey, do that hey. And every time you even know You gotta keep on kicking it off the top of the flow Big domino, I'm knocking them down This is the art of war, big carnivore You already know what I'm this art that is one for back. I'm a dick like hey, 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 hey. I'm a dick you. I'm a hit you, I'm a do to you When the new to you, this is my to do to you This is my to do to you, this is my to do to you Your mama is beautiful Fuck a man and chop the cuticle I catch you slipping in the office cubicle This is the the pool Because you know the shots are intervening It's like a pharmaceutical Hey, hey, here we go Hey yo, this is what I'ma do to you I'm bringing harm to you rappers I'm the motherfucking bomb on you rappers I'm a, I drop the bomb, I'm like Saddam on you rappers I'm, hey yo, I'm like Osama on you rappers I'ma bring some change, I'm like Obama on you faggots You don't wanna fucking battle with me Cause I smack you with this rap shit Get smacked with a fucking piece of chapstick I'll break it off in your fucking face and that's it I'll put your little bitch ass and sleeping in the casket Fold you like a bitch and then I'll put you in a basket Picnic basket, or you could end up in the kitchen Kitchen cabinet, you wanna act like you won't get your ass kicked. Told you last time, I'm about to leave him with the flat line. Grab a glass of wine, then I smack him, then I crack his spine, break him down. Get a chiropractor, put him back in line. I don't give a fuck, man. Watch how quick I travel back in time. Marty McFly, you know the flow is too sick, man. You hardly would try. I'm too much for you. I don't think you're comfortable. You wanted to try. You wanna, man, you wanna just die. You probably playing with the wrong person, cursing. I'm running up, I'm a the motherfucker. Terrorist Persian Fuck around and pull a bomb from under my turban I think you <laughs> When were you learning? When were you learning? Burn through your epidermis This shit is fucking hot like mercury surface Bitch, you don't wanna fucking touch that furnace But sometimes you need to so you learn, bitch You don't learn if you don't even learn You probably don't even deserve this My concern is with these people's real discernment They ain't got discernment They ain't got concern with shit But getting money and where the fuck this earth went we all fucking bent on
on this fucking messed up road. Hey yo, hey yo, hey hey, a la mode, smoking on the a la mode, sitting on the fucked up road. I got my brain all swole. Big cerebellum about to, about to implode. My brain about to fold to a little singular spot and explode. I don't think so. Flow like El Nino, hotter than a jalapeno, hotter than your fucking daughter, hotter. Than your daughter. Y'all hear all the styles this motherfucker just fucking released on the one beat? Hey, here we got this. He went from boom, 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 to boom, 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 boom. Man, that shit was wild. If you think so, if you fucking think so, I believe so. Bo, I believe so. You want to deep though? Probably walking around with a fucking speed though. He's a fucking weak hoe. He is probably emo. He wouldn't even know. I'm smoking hot as fuck all day like it's Puerto Rico. MCs want to play around and can't even see though. I got the tool on me. I roll with the hammers like Home Depot. You want to play around and I'm going to do this for the people. Oh, peep the show. You just peeping through Yo, this a peephole. Dude, this dude owes you, you a just check. Peeping through a peephole with a peep you a peeping tom with a peep show you want to play around with me though even pete know i fuck around and let the heat blow then you can take your seat bro from here to heathrow you know that's england if you need to know you don't want to play around with me it's unbelievable thoughts that i bring is unconceivable you people want to see me but the thing is you be scheming bull shit if you see me i'ma pull a full clip full on your fucking pieces of shit you know that you want some dull shit your life right your knife ain't for the samurai, you rappers try. Rappers wanna play around this calamine, ayy. Pantomiming, MCs wanna play around, I'm breaking them down, they stepping on some minds. You walking in the battlefield, ayy, hold on, let me change up my style. Ayy, ayy, uh. This is live, motherfucker, you're winning this shit live. Big dog, I be doing it like that. Big battlefield, big battlefield. These cats lacking the steel, and you lacking the appeal. Plus, you lacking the real. If I come back, I'ma smack you fucking faggots. This is just how I feel. Fuck around and lay you down, get your banana peeled. Your head get knocked off of your fucking shoulders, it's real. If you feel like I feel, you know I got to do it. The flow is straight fluid. Any moment end up truing, and you're gone now. And you're, and with you gone now. Stupid in the brain, cause you're feeling like a blonde now. Stains on, stains on, I leave your face gone. Half of the game, I roll up like I was James Bond. Rockets from the side of the car. Uh, and yo, rockets from the side of the car. And if you're trying to, if you're trying to, the flow is undeniable. I stab you with an icicle and try to pull. I do a drive by on a bicycle. I roll up and leave your wifey full of bullets on the side before you try to pull your fucking gun. You die in bull. Shit, you wanna play around, you wanna try to do this. Nothing you could do, I'm undeniable. I'm back, I'm an ego, maniacal rhymer I'ma run up with a rifle full of rounds If you play around with me, better recite the fucking Bible, dude You better go and get your Bible I am full of fucking nitroglycerin I hope everybody in your life don't listen In your life don't whistling I just be sitting on the side of your dog I just might be whispering like Caesar Milan You don't want to play around, you see me gone Fuck around in the trees like Vietnam You don't wanna see me if you see the bomb I'ma see this, see this, see the cedar tree MCs wanna see me, there ain't no fucking decency Ain't no regency here, ain't no speak to me here If you don't speak to me clear, all of your peeps disappear Ain't nobody in the, try to see in the mirror But you just look back behind you and see evil in your rear I'll be standing there, the grim reapers in your rear With a big sickle blade here to reap you from uh, your now tears you got, Now I'm you gotta a, take them home damn. with it Shit, God, that's man. what happens when I start freestyling. Bro. Jesus oh, Christ! Here it starts going when I start my guy. getting in the zone. He took the my God! Hey, yo, here it starts going he when I start getting off. in the zone. Yeah. I was trying to tell people yeah. about him. I feel like nobody wanted to listen. By the way, this is the beat that you love, like I told you. Oh, I, 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 I. Ooh, big dog. Yeah, uh, uh. Hey, how we doing this? How we doing this? How we doing this? I was, I was feeling the funk, smelling that shit from the trunk. I was wondering if it was a skunk, but probably a body man. I done fucked up. I done. Walk down the wrong alley, kill a Cali, know that it came, this is the final finale, I'm sitting inside of the valley, getting high, but I know this is the last time I do this, this my rally, used to know this whole name Sally, used to bring me a bunch of 
rich a bunch of packs and liquid and gallons they play around you ready know i got phalans and fuck around it's just like an eagle coming through with their talons i'm coming swooping up the talent i knock you off balance any mc step to me you know they ain't no challenge you fuck around with the challenger my hands is full of calluses standing in front of my own palance ready to cause a massacre i clear out everybody inside my parameter mc's getting popped with a big 30 yacht caliber or maybe the 308 mc's will see they fate play around with me you already know you gon' defecate on your fucking self i resuscitate life if they step to me i elevate right if they step to me they go escalate to a fight if it does then everybody gonna end up investigating this tonight yeah this shit is crazy i put together words because i've never been lazy these words come crazy to me right off the pages of my own brain no i'm amazing i stayed the same so much was when went on with me in the last couple of years i've lost my fucking mind through the sanity and these fears yeah i'm starting to fall off i need to catch it again Pat hey, yeah. <laughs> this ain't no fucking beginner shit either though R.I.P. Hey, like, pat stay all right, you doing another one? Nah, I'm just giving you past state. Yeah, you yeah. said throw a word. I'm going th- to do this, but I'll, after this, we'll sign off. Here we go. This is a grand finale, goddammit. I can't let y'all oh, get yeah, this yeah. much free disaster. You know what I mean? That's your shit. That, that's hey, it's real off right the top there. shit, that's though, the so it's fun. Yeah. You know, random shit be coming out when we're doing that. Right, boom, boom, boom. boom. Yeah, no. I was there, I was there, I was there. I was, there. I was getting high in back. But yeah. tell me about tell me about my man. I seen it all man. happen like hey, yeah. Hey yo, my boy passed away. Life has been tough. I think about him sometimes. You know it gets rough. All the moments I used to be so inspired from a guy that I didn't even want to retire, let alone end up dying. And I was so inspired the moment it happened. My soul started crying, yeah, I can freestyle about it Because I sat down through the pain and cried about it Got on that stage with a fucked up leg I did it all because it was in my heart None of this shit was in my head, man I, I was feeling the emotions But regardless, I was still floating I was fucking hoping Through the fucking stars in the skies I could see it glowing And I could see it all happening Surprise, it was It was just another inner light For me to get over another inner fight It was too much for me The motion straight exploded As I got on stage and unloaded I felt decoded Cause after that, my soul promoted To another fucking level That I never even noticed And I am here now uh, and ain't no way this energy could disappear now It's all stuck with me and it's floating to the sky LLPS till the day that I die and they know it I am a poet One shot to make this right, I can't blow it Some people might not know it But, eh, yeah, I am a motherfucking prophet I am somebody you need to listen to Cause sometimes these situations are unpredictable We need to give love to each other That's what I learned from my boy Pat Stay already know this my turn to Tell these people how it really is right now These people getting crazy in the biz right now A lot of us is grown, we have kids right now So instead of dying, we should wanna live right now I feel like nobody is speaking the things that should be said We all know what's going on, but it's all stuck in our head And it never comes out Unless it's dreams in my bed And when I woke up I'm just doing negative shit instead But I just keep on trying to work on myself And my discipline, my inner self That's telling me to stop fucking fidgeting I'm, I'm feeling like I'm falling in this hole And I try to get myself up Need to keep my control But my essence is Holding on to the things that we value Like a presence in the gift That's the presence right now If you listen to the essence of the shit When my boy passed I learned a lesson from the shit My boy Pat, man God in this damn. game like Pac-Man Yeah, and for you I throw it all in the trash can Yeah, who am I talking about? That man, that's Pac-Man You already know I seen it all come down like a volcano That was ready to blow The lava that came out of me The drama that came fuck around Had a river from fire and flames Fuck it uh. Damn, I don't even know how that last part came. <laughs> I, 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 that shit kind of teared me up a little heart, bit. Yeah, I literally started tearing me up. I've been really freestyling. Sometimes, Yo. like, man, I'll be, it's hard Come to, on. like, y'all, y'all kind of got me in the zone. It's I hard can. to, like. Appreciate that. You know, when Honestly, you, like, You made me feel like nah, I was in the room with that motherfucker blessing. right now. I'm not going to lie. That shit literally just got me It's crazy to be able to do that without even thinking about it. To be, like, because if I sit down and write some. 
like I, I know it would be like extremely like you know what I mean but it's like when it's real you could kind of just right go there I already did that alone in the car a couple times and it was same shit ever. It's just no one was around to see it. I'm Even still, <laughs> I'm still, grieve, I'm still you like, grieve. you gotta grieve. I'm still like, how are we talking regular right now? That shit was, <laughs> was fun. that good. It was that yeah. good. Yeah. 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 Anytime you can channel I, I that, I, I'm dead ass serious. I got like, I felt like I felt. I don't know Pat Stay. I felt like I knew him in that fucking moment. God damn. I I'm say really like, like, you know, I, like, I, I should I should stop smoking weed, god damn it. That's what I don't like about it. Pat, Pat it, definitely, you, you catch, definitely you was my spirit zone. animal. Yeah. That's my spirit animal. Right. <laughs> so yeah, man, you already know. Yo, man. all the people that tuned in tonight. <laughs> that shit's still running? <laughs> yeah. Love all the me. people that tuned in tonight, you just got to see some fucking magic. I hope they liked it. Yeah, I think they fucking liked it. <laughs> I, I, that shit was fire. Was Yo, again, make sure y'all are telling somebody to tell somebody. Don't steal my shit. I'm watching you motherfuckers. All right? But, I mean, shit, pour it out there. Let the people get it. But make sure you're hitting that subscribe button, that like button, and you're yeah. telling it. And when you see this shit on another platform, make sure you write on the bottom of it. Be like, yo, you know that's the Danza Project. Yeah. G and shit. That's all y'all Tag it. Do. All right. We'll be back news. tomorrow. We'll be back Friday. But, you know, today we fucking sit down and chop it up with disaster. Y'all got to hear us chop it up and have a regular conversation. And now we're kicking it. So goodbye. <laughs>